listening to the Funbox Podcast. I ate a bunch of LSD. I did a series of videos on rape victims. Dude, being left-handed, it's the worst thing in the world. With your host, Rob Webb. Can you tell me if it's a uh, cut or uncut? For visual sake? Oh, yeah. It's a very it's much so uncut. uncut. That's how I roll. Nice! Nice! <laughs> Louis Armstrong, famous uh, Louis uh, Anderson, <laughs> famous comedian Louis Anderson has passed away. Did he eat an old meatloaf? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Fun Box Podcast, episode 75. I'm with... John Bellis, is that how you say your last name? That is how you say my last name. What's going on, dude? Thank you for coming on the show. I think, Absolutely. yeah, there's your camera right That's there. That's mine. All yeah. right, all right. Yep, waving, waving to the fine folks. Uh, what, like I said, there's something that goes wrong every episode. That intro beat, my second intro music. Too low for some reason. Don't know why it's so low. Oh, what's going on right now? Yeah, it just uh, it, I hit it, and I have a natural fade. Mm. For it to like, and it'll end at some point. Yep, so that I don't sounded have to worry like it was a hearing test. You know, yeah. like, what, what's the last note <laughs> yeah. you hear there? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, those uh, hearing tests are weird. Have you? When's the last time you did one? Of I those? actually just did one like three months ago. I was just curious, and they're weird. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'll raise my hand. You know, for the, <laughs> I feel like I think I heard something. Yeah, you get those ghost notes. Yeah, for it's sure. like a, a phantom beep. You're like, yeah. Did, was that just my imagination? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> remember doing that when i was a kid i remember once being a kid is weird because uh when i was a kid it was weird because i didn't have like a, a nice i didn't have confidence to speak up for myself and there was we did an eye exam and i totally had one of my eyes was totally like watery and like obviously not ready for an eye exam i had a bunch of water in it and I just took the eye exam anyway, <laughs> and by one eye was really good, and the other eye, were, they were like, hmm. <laughs> the other eye sucked so bad, and I'm like, what? And I didn't say anything, and they like, it was like 2015, or I don't even know what it was. Yeah. I don't know how they measure that. Me neither. The is, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I sucked as a kid. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, I actually, when I was 15 years old, melted my corneas. Ooh. That, that's a fun story. I it actually it was very easy. I just accidentally put my contacts in my mom's contact case, and she wears like hard contacts. Yeah, there's a chemical reaction, and yeah, melted my corneas. I was blind for three days. Holy crap! Yeah, dude, that would have scared the shit. Oh out yeah, of me. no, I was terrified. I was terrified. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. I mean, like the fi- like the five hours before I got to the doctor, I was absolutely terrified. Like literally, my vision was going. Like I couldn't see my hand in front of my eyes, and I remember having. Was it, it dark or black, like closing your eyes, or was it? Just, no, it was like so min- blurry, blurry that I got yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, the super light sensitive. So after after like a day of the medication that I was on, I was able to walk around as long as there was no light, and I could have my eyes open and I could see kind of. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was terrifying. Yeah, I was yeah. uh, wonder like some blind people that walk around with their eyes open. I wonder like, if they're blind, like what they're actually, what they're, I can't say seeing because they're blind. Yeah. But is it like black, like nothing? Or is it, or are they seeing everything? It's just their brain can't oh, even right, like right. register what it is. And they're just like, Duh, yeah, anyway, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, I have no idea. I always just assumed black. Yeah. And just, you know, nothing. Um, but yeah, and I don't know how neurological it is either. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a fun YouTube channel I used to follow. It was a blind guy that answered questions, and he was born blind. Mm. And uh, they asked him actually, "Would you ever uh, see if you could see if you could see? Would you ever?" And he said, "No," mm. because he says he don't think he can handle it. Yeah, I mean, he, I, he's like like a superpower. He looks at it as like a superpower. No, looks at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's like, man, people that see, they forget where their car is. I never forget where my car is at or where the car is. Mm. Like, uh, he, I think we rely on our vision so much, we take it for granted. And then, uh, 
Well, yeah. I mean, you think about whenever you're trying to like remember something, it's almost always a visual visual cue, memory. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like, people like, almost get in a car accident for seeing a pretty girl on the street, and it <laughs> just blows my mind how you can. That's like a superpower being able to sense something that far away. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I was like, man, yeah. that's a interesting. And he tried to draw on a flat surface, and he said, "This is this is the weirdest concept to me too, because this surface is flat. I can't." draw something that's three-dimensional on a flat surface i don't get what you, how you would even begin to do something like that right so he kind of like was like i don't know heads are round so i'll just r- draw a round circle and <laughs> he was doing it like i mean yep that's how you do it i guess yeah you know? <laughs> right right but huh. it's interesting man that is. and then the helen kellers of the world man it's like it's a crazy it's crazy the human spirit how strong it can be when you're deaf dumb and blind and still be able to like write a book yeah oh hell yeah <laughs> and kudos to her mentor or her teacher or i think there was like a book in the whole story about right, her. yeah There's, d- she's a faint she's actually like held really in high regards in that whole that whole like amazing like miracle story yeah because she broke I think it was her called the miracle worker was, was it or like something that. like yeah, that yeah yeah yeah. I, I actually I, I know what you're talking about I she remember. got her to say water yeah right it was her like first word to say water yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh oh, i'm actually wearing helen keller's favorite uh color right now oh yes you are corduroy <laughs> all right uh where's my to do uh, we'll just go there's a lot of all right. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. We get a little. We get a little uh, wild here in the box. But uh, yeah, John Bellis is here. He has. He's brought his guitar. Probably gonna play its song. You know what? You want to just like go ahead and just play something for us, and then we can get to today's episode. Well, what am I gonna get to? It's episode seventy-five. Uh, we have. Oh, we we got, definitely got to do this. Oh. So we have a shot. We have to do the the Jack Daniels. That's fun. Jack Daniels, if you please. Knock me to my knees. There we go. And it just might do that because uh, I'm not I'm not one of those shot people, you know. So this will be uh, fun. This will be fun. Well, thank you for playing along. Yeah. Because I didn't even ask you if you drank. <laughs> let alone do shots so it happened it was like right on the show we find out that you're like no i'll relapse if i right yeah right right i'm 10 years sober yeah man dude why are you doing this to me man <laughs> i shouldn't have came <laughs> but uh yeah thank you for coming he's a local musician i, I think it takes a lot of it takes an outside perspective to kind of gear or i hate lumping people in genres but i would consider you uh folk uh, I don't know, is that is folk not okay to say? Uh, like a folk song singer, songwriter, rock. Uh, yeah, I've, I've absolutely. Folk rock singer songwriter, is that bad? No, because no, I mean, I've done that. You can you can call me that. It's not just that. Oh, yeah, for it, sure. Right. It's not just that. Right, yeah. No, that's, I was, you know, like I said, I was contemplating bringing an acoustic guitar, an electric guitar, or two synthesizers, you know? Oh, okay. Um, and actually, I'm glad I didn't because the two synthesizers, it, I, it's like a whole setup because I would need to, you know, play both. Yeah. It'd be, it would have been a nightmare to set up. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, hey, sometimes. Rock and maybe, roll. Just yeah, rock no. and roll. Just yeah. Keep it simple. Absolutely. Yeah. That's no. a, it's, yeah. Nowadays, it's hard to, genres, man. I don't. Really, I never really care for him any. But I think most musicians don't. They're just like, uh, like you, when you ask Van Halen, it's kind of like, oh, we're rock and roll, man, just regular rock and roll band. But somebody else that loves rock and roll listens to them and goes, that's too abrasive. Yeah, that's too aggressive. Right. Yeah. This is a little, oh, it's a little aggressive uh, beat for a rock and roll song. Right. Oh, absolutely. It's a little loud. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's people that you know are just like, no, that's. That's bullshit, you know. Like this is very basic rock and roll. Yeah, right. But what right. are you talking about? You want to hear loud? Right. I got some Lamb of God. Yeah, right. Or right. Whatever. Yeah. I hate, mean, hate breed. You like hate breed? <laughs> it's called hate breed. <laughs> oh man. All right. God damn. But uh, yeah, man. John Bell is here. Uh, I guess you can. You could uh, at any time you want. Go ahead and. Uh, 
play up something? Yeah, I'm still torn. I don't know if I should do the synth song on an acoustic guitar or do an electric song that actually has a lot of distortion on it on acoustic guitar. Neither one work, really. Um, I don't know which one works best, but yeah, you know, I'll, I'll give the... Yeah, feel it out. Fighting like the cat stuck in a cage Inspired by my hatred and my rage To go on living like this Nervous notions fly, synapses shooting blind While trying to find what happens in my mind I'm feeling repetitious to breathe while dealing with the situation walking through a swarm of bees and i'm trying not to swing past you're not so hard to read while sifting through your complications you've got the audacity to try and take it things you know that was dynamic yeah, yeah. i like that yeah thank you thank you oh yeah it's pretty much the same thing for about two minutes and then it just it's just not anymore yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah i like i like watching those um some of these uh reaction videos <coughs> i hate a lot of them too but uh i like the uh, reaction videos of these like vocal singers are like very artsy, like Oberlin College, artsy, uh, the like music theorists. Oh yeah, they'll be like listen to um, they'll listen to like the last one I this girl listened to the Corn's first album. Oh damn! And it was and it's such an aggressive album. I don't know if you're familiar with that record, but it's uh, it builds up and at the end he pretty much breaks down and cries in the microphone oh damn damn yeah this is real aggressive and uh angry the entire time mm -hmm. but there's a lot of quirky but she had a really good perspective of uh of music at the time when i first heard corn i was like i thought it was evil and i, I was really secluded I, I was raised gospel and um, oh damn gotcha so uh, anything like that was just like whoa it was just uh but which kind of drew me towards it it was just like even somebody like marilyn manson was uh it, it was almost like watching uh a scary movie and mm. then uh like 
like you think about your favorite scary movie, chances are you saw it as a kid and it terrified you. Oh God, yeah. You know, and it just haunts you forever. Well, that's kind of like how like this a lot of this music was for me. It was, uh, yeah, just gotcha. uh, real haunting. But yeah, she had a, she broke it down in a good like music theory way. A, a quirky, there's quirky notes, quirky uh, time signatures, and very dynamic things. It's really funny to listen to somebody that has never experience this kind of music and then hear it for the first time in a very educated yeah mindset know, yeah knows what she's talking about and yeah and, and i was like well she's right about everything she's saying right like, I get, yeah she's like it, 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 but knucklehead me i listened to it and i just bang my head just like yeah <laughs> oh dude that did that but yeah i love those breakdowns in the old like the old late 90s early 2000s those build-ups in the break oh, dude and yeah. then they go i don't i miss that yeah and you know what took it over a little bit dubstep they took that they, oh yeah they fucking took that concept and Oh, made, absolutely. Made such a, there was a big moment in time where dubstep was just fucking perfect. Yeah. It was perfect timing. I loved it. Drugs were cool. Hell yeah. No, that's just, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you watched, I mean, maybe this is assuming. I don't know. And actually, if a gospel upbringing, maybe not. Did you watch much Beavis and Butthead? I wasn't allowed. Yeah, I didn't think so. But I, I would sneak and watch it. Like, if they went to bed early, right? I'd have to turn the TV down, down real low and go up to the TV and listen to it. Because if she heard anything like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, then I, I was in trouble. Yeah, so. oh, I'm sure. But th- So did you watch any of, like, when it came back? Like, for, like, a season or two or something like that? I don't know. Oh, damn. They had this awesome, because they always used to, like watch music videos you know that was yeah. part of it and they'd comment on it yeah and one of the music videos for the newest well, i don't know i don't really know if they had more than one season or not that came out but it was for that uh skrillex scary monsters something oh, okay. music video and it's like this little girl that's i think it's pretty much her like beating up a pedophile or something like that is what the video is just with her mind though you know and uh and just the whole time, like, it's like, oh, I shouldn't have sent that kid to Hogwarts. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> cracks me up. I remember when I was a kid watching it, he was, they were commenting on uh, Fiona Apple's criminal video. And uh-huh. everybody's just laying around like 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 they just booted smack. <laughs> like, it's such a drug. Everybody looks super high yeah. and sweaty. That's a weird thing. I don't know if I had to get on a dark subject about fucking heroin use. Oh, yeah. Huh. But that's the weirdest thing to see somebody like almost passed out sweating. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's just alarming. You know, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I feel like drugs are not, you know, like that. They're all it's, shiny. It's, they have a, like a glow and they're yeah. just like. Yeah, no, definitely. That's uh, Ugh. yeah, uh, it's yeah. bad stuff. Don't do drugs, guys. Nope, nope. Don't do drugs. I don't have a don't do drug button. I ate a bunch of LSD. <laughs> yeah, okay, that might be that, better. Then. Yeah, that, that's that's a drug that uh, I'm, I'll you. I won't shame you for. Yeah, I by mean, any means, you might open your mind a little. I don't. I don't know anything much about LSD, but I don't do it. I have. I've done it once for a mm-hmm. New Year's party, and it was uh. Not a lot. I just took a little bit, and it was, like, too much, too intense for me. Yeah, no, no. Well, and actually, uh, psychedelics pretty much just ruined marijuana for me. Like, oh, yeah? I, I just can't even do it anymore, else my brain goes to one of those places. Oh, yeah, yeah, like you just took a time machine back, right back into where you were at. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, so that that's a bummer. That is a bummer. Um, but overall, good experiences, you know, I right. think. Yeah, I've had a lot of good ones, a lot of bad ones. I've had moments where I'm like, I might die tonight, <laughs> but I'm just really high. <laughs> yep, yeah. Um, off of the THC, that'll yep. do that to you. Yep, uh-huh. But one good thing it did do for me, it, it made me quit drinking for the night, you know? So I think it, it's helped people a lot in that aspect. I think people go overboard with the booze, and then they smoke, and they're like, you know what? I shouldn't be driving. Yeah. Oh, no, I absolutely. remember getting in my car once, drunk. And then I, I smoked right before I got in my car, and I got in my car, and I felt like I was in a giant, like, ship. And, like, it was a Crown Vic. Those are big anyway, but when I was high, it was just way too big. I was like, I don't even know if I can operate this thing. <laughs> it's so huge. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I didn't drive, thank God. Yeah. And, and I think the weed did that. It, right, right, yeah. It does snap you back, you know, like. Yeah. Alcohol gives you that confidence, and Pot's like, well, I don't know, man. I don't like, know, you shouldn't think about this. You also could have a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's, yeah. That's, well, that's what Pot does for me anymore. That's just... You know that thing beating your chest? That's your heart. Yeah, right. That could stop at any moment. <laughs> right. I don't know if you know that. It's a kind of a weird magic thing that's happening right there in your chest where it just keeps beating. Yep. Uh huh. It's just a piece of fucking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like just uh, membranes and flesh and cartilage. I don't even know what it's made out of. Yep. But it, it, it beats somehow. Yeah. Like they do the heart transplants, and it's kind of a miracle. Oh, God. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole concept of life in general to me is just how they could just like, or anesthesia is a weird thing. That you could die from anesthesia. That's why they have the anesthesiologists on hand and like they monitor all your vitals. You could die just, yeah. by, the, you know, just oh, yeah. by them putting you down, So oh, yeah. let alone taking your heart out of your chest. Oh, no, that's, yeah, yeah. And actually, that's, uh, like, I have two family members that both had that thing that, like, they don't actually fall asleep under anesthesia. Oh. So, like, they're awake the whole time, oh, but no. they can't move. Yeah, no, that shit's... That, that's I, just That was terrifying. my biggest fear. When I went yeah. to get my wisdom teeth taken out, they had to put me down and... That was my biggest fear. Like, what if I'm one of those people? Yeah. No. That wake up and it's like, <laughs> I walked in on my car in mid transmission change. Like, it was like where he was fixing my transmission. And like, right in the middle, I walked in and to give him some money. It was like a guy that was working in his own garage. And it felt like me waking up in surgery. I was like, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure waking up in surgery is uh, way worse. <laughs> or your, my dad said he woke up once and they were operating on his hip and his leg was like right by oh, his <laughs> no. No. his yeah. leg was like up in the air no, like no, in no. a position he could never put it in <laughs> right, right. I'm like that sucks dude <laughs> Jesus Christ no thanks no yeah. thanks it's, I'm, I'm good on all of it but all these things we speak of today brings us to our topic of discussion for the episode. It's glitches in the Matrix. And the Matrix, everybody's watched the movie. Mm-hmm. It suggests that we live in a simulation that is, like, controlled by a another entity. Mm-hmm. What what it may be, what it, that entity is, I don't know. In the movie, it's, like, machines yeah, or whatever. Right. Um, uh, the simulation theory people believe in that uh simulation theory even the flat earthers uh not don't necessarily believe the earth is flat as much as that's just a simulation to make us think it's round i don't believe in any of this what i'm talking about i just think it's interesting and i think stories of people that have these moments in life where they experience a glitch in the matrix whether it be deja vu that happens when they change something by the way um, in the Matrix, mm-hmm. um, like put, the actual like, platform of it. Yeah, well, okay. they put a brick wall in front of my uh, door, and I can't get out. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, the agents come in and shoot me up, and they steal Morpheus, mm. and then they go. But that's what happened in the movie. <laughs> but glitches in the Matrix. I've actually, if before we start, I have a compilation video of uh things that I think were compelling and interesting as far as why people believe in glitches in the matrix a lot of these are explained can be explained and are explainable and have been explained and but they're interesting and they're interesting phenomenons that happen in the world i think there's a lot of interesting phenomenons that happen all the time and a phenomenon isn't necessarily something that happens very few far between phenomenons happen all the time tornado is a weather phenomenon and those happen all the time we can never really predict it because there's we could predict the what it what causes it and like oh this is a potential weather right, for a conditions. tornado the conditions right but we can never really predict when it happens because the conditions have been perfect so many times but uh, still no tornado and then the conditions were like oh we might be able to skate by and next thing you know an f5 is going through a destroying an entire uh, town so um Glitches in the Matrix, and uh, before we start, we could go into any personal 
experiences, if you could dig your brain, I could start. One that stands out to mind to me as far as a glitch in the matrix, I was driving, and a lot of them always happens when they're driving. There's these, uh, there's phantom cars people talk about, and I'm not going to get on phantom cars uh, because the Midnight Train podcast is going to cover that, and uh, they talked about their, that's one of their next episodes they're going to cover, so I'm just going to, I'm a Patreon for those guys. Oh, cool. Uh, check out the Midnight Train podcast, everybody, with uh, Jonathan Sayer and Jeff Butchko and Moody and Logan. Check those guys out. It's a really cool podcast. They bring the dark to light. What's that mean? Well, they joke around and talk about creepy shit while giving you as much information on each topic as possible. <laughs> I just did their, their they, little. That's their thing. <laughs> that's awesome. That's though. their thing. But yeah, I support those guys. They're really cool dudes. And I've What's had them up? on the show. One of I think it was episode sixty or sixty five. Okay. They were on. Where are they from? Um, North Ridgeville. Oh, cool. And uh, awesome. they were in. They're big musicians. They were in a band called Erase the Gray, Burning Vegas some other bands and some cover bands in Cleveland area. And they're really good. Awesome. Uh, so check them out. Check out Erase the Gray uh, on Spotify. They have the record on there. So Erase the Gray. And I believe it's G-R-E-Y they use. Gray has two spellings. Yeah, no. And that's, it's funny because that's one of those things where like I've realized that, you know, maybe it sounds pretentious. I don't know. But I, I oftentimes go towards like the English or British kind of spelling for things. Like, gray g-r-e-y is always how i think of it and behavior i almost always put a u at the end oh i see yeah i see why you would want to do that i don't know yeah but and maybe that's not even a british thing maybe i just like i'm well, like oh i'm fancy adding a fancy u. <laughs> uh, an aristocrat <laughs> we're back to the aristocrat we we're talking about the uh documentary aristocrat i just watched the other day and everybody needs to watch that it's an older documentary back when people were normal back in 05 when the world was normal, um, well, I think it was, but uh, people are so uptight nowadays. And uh, back then, it had all those, all the classic comedians talking about the aristocrat joke. And uh, check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, back to the glitches in the matrix. Yeah, it is uh, something that happens in life that you can't explain. Deja vu. There's people. That have seen their doppelganger on a bus, somebody that looks just like them. I don't consider those glitches in the Matrix more of coincidences, mm -hmm. and that's another subject I want to tackle in the future is co strange coincidences. Yeah, those blow my mind. Yeah. Some of the coincidences that I mean, the twins two... separated at birth that end up having like the same lives. Yeah, that's so weird. no, I know that I, yeah. shit blows my mind. No, it is weird, and that's I mean that's not too far off of the glitches in the matrix. Yeah, thing, though, for real. I mean that's you know I mean they're obviously you know like I I separate them and I, but I would also separate deja vu from glitches in the matrix. You know, yeah. like I mean I, I you know I'm not the person that came up with glitches in the matrix so i don't have a say really in what yeah. it's cl what's clumped into it but um yeah no they're you know like the the one that i just that blew my mind recently that i you know was i learned about was the you know ready whip doesn't have an h in it and whip you know just oh R it don't have an h no it's just r-e-d-d-i oh yeah the mandela effects yeah or yeah, another like form that. yeah right. another form of uh glitches right what i also heard it explained a lot of the mandela effects is back in 09 they turned on this thing yeah. called the hydron collider uh-huh yeah, yeah and after that did you know i've never learned about this in school but did you know there's a great wall of india that's just as ancient. It's an ancient Great Wall. No, I've got I've got two really good Indian friends. It's I've, a beautiful wall. Let me bring up a picture of this. They're some wall. of my best friends. What are you guys doing? What what? Great Wall of India um, is a wall in India. That's a beautiful wall. Yeah. And nobody talked about it. And apparently, apparently, it's oh dang. It's um, it's been. That's a whole ass monument. That's a hill. That's crazy. That's a that's. Yeah, apparently it's been um. You know what I mean? It's yeah. been. That's crazy. It, it's existed ever since you know, and they're all in the history books. You could learn about them, mm -hmm. but we don't. 
And apparently that's a dimension that we got transferred into to where all of our history books changed, everything changed. Where right, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now apparently there's a Great Wall of India that to nobody be fair, talks about. <laughs> to be fair, though, I, d- I don't, you know, I know that there is a Great Wall of China. I have no idea what the Great Wall of China looks like. I have no idea. Is it on hills like that? Is it that yeah. cool looking? Great Wall of China is. All right, yeah. Shut up. Is, Teach me something. The Great Wall of China oh, is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, it, it's I forget how long it is. I mean, there's stats for it. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Yep. See, well, one, I didn't know that it was a whole ass thing you could like walk across. Can you? I mean, it looks yeah, like you can. Yeah, you can walk across that, yeah. People visit it all the time. I thought you just went through it or around it. I didn't know you could walk on top of it. Hmm. Uh, spanning 21,996.18 kilometers, so 13 miles long. It's a 13-mile-long wall. That's, like, pretty amazing wall. But that's the Chinese, the Great Wall of China. But the Great Wall of India I heard about, and it just fascinated me to know that I have never nobody taught me about that. Oh, yeah, school. no, no, like, never oh, even heard about it. Also, there's an Indian wall, guys. I <laughs> check that out. But, uh. Yeah, the Mandela effects. That's another weird thing that happened in our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, a term. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of those effects that they're bringing, like, our culture has, like, and with the internet has uh, helped. Like the Berenstain create. Bears and Berenstain Bears yeah. and stuff like that. And, oh, I'm too familiar. I don't know. But, like, I have had one personal thing like that that I, you know, being a part of it, where, like, 50% of people say, like, no, it's this, and 50% say that. It's very mundane in terms of, you know, you're talking about all these other things. But when I was working at a restaurant, we had these two different colored coffee cups, one for decaf, one for regular. And one day, I swear, it was the dishwasher, like, flipped them. And I was like, why are we putting the regular where the decaf is? And... The person next to me was like, no, that's where they've always gone. And then somebody else walked up and they were like, why are they putting the regular where the decaf was? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. and it's like, and then we took this poll and it was literally everybody. It, it was like 50, 50, like it was, and that was weird to me, you know, like even though it's super mundane, yeah, totally it, unimportant, like inconsequential to anybody's life. Yeah. To really, to really care about. But the fact but, is 50% of people remembered it one way and 50% remembered it another way. Like how exactly does that happen? Yeah. You know, like it's not just two people. We're talking like at least 10 to 12 people, you know, like, yeah, I do that with, uh, a lot of things actually. Um, when I want to remember something, I'll be like, oh, that's what it is, that's what it is, that's what it is. But I think what my brain does is it switches because it, it goes, it's so like, it's not that. In my brain, I don't want it to be that so much that in that through time when I don't, when I'm not engaged in whatever it is, my brain like flips it on me. And it's like, oh, it's not, no, it's not supposed to be that. Like I'm focused on both things rather than the one thing that it should be i don't i really don't know what it, i think it's our brains fucking with us but um i do that with like products that we work with at work like something's called ad737 and something's called ad518 or something and i'm like okay that's not ad518 that's ad737 that's ad518 and i'll try to come up with a way to remember which thing is that and then some day comes where I'm like, all right, that's eighty five eighteen, and somebody's like, no, that's eighty seven three seven. I'm like, yeah. what? I've been, yeah. What the I, hell I is going process. on in my brain? I'm in a, a process <laughs> of learning this stuff. Yeah, I, I've learned that. Um, it, it's a that maybe there's a fifty percent divide thing because I have found because even like waiting on tables, you know, I did that for years. You know, if I had an option of just two things, so if like a two top ordered food. Right, and I didn't write anything down. Bad there, mistake. Bad mistake. Well, no, not like the food was rang Unless in you're right. Unless you're really good. But the food, so the food would be rang in right, and it'd be yeah. coming out. But I could never remember who got what. Yeah. You know, but I could have an eight top and do the exact same thing and remember the whole thing. Oh, right. Like, yeah, the two things you're flipping, they're so easy. Just, to- it, yeah, it's to say that's that. But yeah. then your brain automatically, I guess, maybe it's just me, but it just says like, I think that's what well, I'm but doing. it could also be that, yeah. you know, like it, it's or like, 
or or that uh i have a issue with uh i have a confident my brain i'm not confident in my brain i don't think anybody should be that confident i mean i i think you should be confident and um i think it does help you i think it's actually a hindrance that i ain't confident about certain things that i learn um because it ruins me in like debates or like conversations where i'm like no that's really the truth like this happened they're like nah fuck and i'm like man shit maybe maybe it isn't i don't know i'm like like maybe i didn't read it right and then turns out i'm right the whole time and i'm just a a fool and i look like a buffoon and uh i I was actually right the whole time and uh i talked about this last week it was like yeah um yeah i i don't know I lost what I lost what I was saying. There was like a memory that I was going to bring up but that had to do with this exact thing. But uh yeah, I think it's just thinking too much. Almost. And people are like, "Oh, you could never think too much." I think it's always good to learn. No, well, I'm saying it's if it, it screwed me thinking too much. I every time I was confidently just like la di da di da, this is the way life is. I go through life way easier, better and I make the better decision and it's okay and uh i can remember things yeah but when i'm thinking too much and i'm like it's my brain has a hard time locking in and yeah no i mean you got to think about it you know because like all of the just subconscious things the brain's doing at all times it i feel like it's kind of weird to think that your brain isn't even kind of subtly doing that in conscious thought too yeah you know like just adding in that what you deem is unnecessary because it just automatically does it. Um, you, it, it. Pretending that that doesn't kind of play a part in even like just trying to remember something or yeah. anything, you know, like that. I feel like that's, you know. Yeah, you, that's a lot of why I do this. This is like a therapy. I used to always talk about that at the beginning of these episodes was like, this is my therapy. And I I did it today. Like just I could think about, oh, is my audio OK? And immediately lose where that brain thought was coming. Mm-hmm. I did I did a few stand up comedy open mics and um to try to like push myself to like maybe condition my brain to hit hit I, I've done a lot of those in my life where I hit my brain with like these moments of complete humiliation uh setting yourself up to be completely humiliated, uh and I don't know why that's a sadomasochist thing that I do to myself because I'm not my personality is not for this. It's not really not for any of this. Like, it's not for standing up in front of people and talking. I've never been a talker. Never been, like, I was always the quiet kid. People, I slept all the time. I'm not, you know, that guy. But I think I've been that guy for so long in my life that I just kind of push myself to do these weird things. Like, I mean, I, I, I could go into different things that I've done to just push myself into these embarrassing situations <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh weird uh it's like a therapy i need to do it and like when your mind goes blank and it does it almost did it again your mind like coming up with the right words to say and even though i'm like when i'm not doing this i have a great vocabulary mm-hmm. it's like oh like i come up with all the right perfect words to say but Put a mic in my face and your headphones on. Get a guest on the show. Put play the music and then uh, it's not the whiskey, guys. I did one shot, one shot. It's okay. You were drunk, weren't you? <laughs> that was always, very good. The other thing. person voice. Yeah, that's something I can't do. Like I mean, the other person voice. The other person voice. Uh, person voice. Uh, you were drunk, weren't you? Stupid. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> This is fun. I could play with this, dude. Don't, yeah, oh, don't even get me started on this thing, man. I'll just start fucking. It'll just be an episode of me going like, yeah, man. Yeah, what's up? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, oh. Gay to la la da. Oh, yeah. La la da. Eight away. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I like to sing on this. Telecon voice live touch. All right. Yeah, yeah it's fun. <laughs> Everybody should get one. I, I don't, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a vocal processor. I use it live for like looping and playing. Yeah, and... no, that's fun. That's fun. 
God damn. Yeah, yeah. I, I was transported to 2005 for a second, I think. <laughs> like, at least, when, wait, no. When I mean, that was actually probably later than that, wasn't it? When Love Lockdown came out? Which uh, was, yeah, it was 2006, about 09. 09? Okay, yeah, okay. Something like that. That adds up. That adds up. Maybe I'm thinking of, what was the... Like graduation day, isn't that the wasn't that what is that what that album was called? His first one. I think that was college dropout. Call that yeah. Well, you know, college dropout, graduation day. Yeah, they're those the same two thing records for me. were really good. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They were uh, really good. Well, and honestly, like that's you know, I mean, he's at least songs. You know, he's had songs that I think are phenomenal even since then. You know, he himself obviously, uh, it, uh yeah, he's uh. He's an interesting guy. Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. And that and that could and that's something everybody can agree with. Yeah. Yeah. Care. yeah. Love him or hate him. <laughs> yep, yep. Interesting fella. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um But yeah. Uh He's a glitch in the Matrix. Yeah, that's for real. One. Yeah, his his whole entity, I think, is yeah. like... It's another one there, like, as far as jokes go, we could talk about glitches in the Matrix. I saw a black guy holding up uh, on... There's a video... This black dude strolling up in a car, and he strolls up on this black dude that's part of this like white supremacist group, and he's holding up a sign that says "All N words go back to Africa." And this dude is like Wesley Snipes black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the guy in the driving driving was like, "I'm going to pray for you, brother. I'm going to pray for you." And the dude holding the sign says, "You should pray for yourself to get a better car than that piece of shit." <laughs> Sorry, glitch in the matrix, guys. Yeah. That was a glitch in the matrix. No, they, it exists because we're all individuals and we all have our downfalls. And I don't care what skin color you are, we're all kind of crazy. So, uh, but to, as for comedy value, that was a glitch in the matrix, even though as sad as it is, glitch in the matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no. that just makes me. What's the what's the Dave Chappelle? I can never remember his name um, when when he was the blind. Donnell oh. Rawlings, or is that what it was? I, it's been so long that I don't. I don't even know if I know the name. When he like he was a white or white supremacist, blind. Oh, black the guy. the the actual character's name. I don't. I'm not yeah, sure. I okay, can't yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. That's uh, that was funny. Yeah. yeah that, God damn. God oh damn. man. Like, yeah. He like, dude, totally flipped people's minds with that show. Oh God. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and he's still trying to do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, and maybe a little aggressively, but, I mean, that's really the only way to do it. And I can only imagine at the time, you know, really, that I was pretty young, you know? So I just found really uh, most things funny, I feel like. Yeah. When you're young, it's easy to have a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, Where now it's kind of like, I can understand why some people get upset about certain things. Absolutely. Um, But and I don't know. I'd, I'd be surprised. I think the older I get, the more calloused I'm becoming. Because like when I was younger, I was super sensitive. Oh, uh, oh, damn. Right, right. Sorry. That's a weird flip for me. When you were listening to fucking probably, you know, what's... uh. Like but I, mean, I, I could, that's all I'm like, upbring and probably did that. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, what yeah, it yeah. Was. yeah. No, I was forced to, you know. Well, I wasn't forced to. I, I went to Catholic school. I don't know if you had to do that or not. No, no. So we, maybe, we were all public school, which was cool. We it was Baptist, and I still stand by. Like I, you know, a lot of the teachings. You know, I stepped away from it for a while, and but a lot of the foundation that was built for me, I, I totally get, and I'm glad we went to public school. We were in Lorraine for a while, actually. Lorraine schools are amazing. I mean, the teachers cut real strict, man. I went to a Lowell Academy. They had burned that down, or they tore it down since then. A lot of the schools, if you, if you're older than 25, your school might get torn down soon. <laughs> like, yeah, right. It's like right. schools just don't last. I don't understand no. the economic like or the the policies behind the school board. Right. Really don't understand where it goes and why people can't just maintain their school. Don't get it. It's like cheaper to burn it down or tear it down and build another one. It, don't get it. Yeah, no, me neither. Yeah. Um, I don't know where all the money. I, I, it, it takes a lot of like political know how to get even involved to understand where any of the funds of the taxpayers' dollars are going. But anywho, <laughs> <laughs> getting off base, yeah. back on the 
don't want to get off the beaded path here. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I I remember when Ryan Dunn from Jackass died. Mm, yeah. Uh, that didn't happen. That happened over ten years ago. Holy shit! Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. It was a while ago. It was like oh eight oh nine. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how to take that information, but that's well, think, fine. Think about Michael Jackson died in 09. Yeah, and I just, that and happened that to me a like month ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So, and that's, that's over 10 years yeah, now. Yeah, no, that's insane. But uh, he died, and WMMS had a host on one of their shows, Cleveland Station, WMMS. He said, he t- tweeted or posted on Facebook, hey, what is this? When Ryan Dunn crashed his car and died. Mm. What is this stunt called? The drunk driver? Uh-huh, and yeah. Nowadays, I'm like, okay, I get it. We have to use comedy to to deal with these things, and that's the point of it, right? And let's just grind it. Right now, I would have been like, "Good one." Yeah, back yeah, then, that's rough. That hurts. Rough, but it should. It was supposed to. Yes, I'm gonna grab it, and we all remember Brian Dunn. Rest in peace. Right. Back then, I was like, "You fucking overplaying jock rock bullshit, fucking j- f- beef, fucking head, fucking idiots." Fuck you and your no, your your fucking fans are also CKY fans and jackass people, man. What the fuck are you? I was so pissed. Yeah, pissed me off because I love that show, Jackass, CKY, all those shows. I mm-hmm. was so into. I was like, I know these guys. They look like people I'd hang out with. Right, not, not all the time because they'd kick me in the balls. But uh, <laughs> like like a lot of those people, I don't know how they were friends for so fucking long. <laughs> they would just abuse each other constantly. Oh yeah, no, but he was such a cool like. Uh, he was like one of my like probably my favorite guy on the entire thing, and he fucking dies. Well, yeah, I mean he was he was like a neutral party, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and that was it was relieving. Like they they their structure was pretty with it if you think about it. You know, they had Steve-O and Knoxville who were just lunatics. Yeah, they had like the people... Bam Margera was a lunatic. Yeah, too. and Bam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. And then they had you're like, I really don't want to fucking do this, people. Yeah. You know, like, and I mean, maybe he leaned a little bit towards that, you know, but I, I always took him as more of like the neutral. Yeah. It was nice to see somebody in the middle like, I'm enjoying doing this, but it really does suck. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> it's like... He was a normal, he was a guy, I, I just... Cl- cl- Related to more than any of them, and yeah. uh, I was so pissed when M- MMS put that out. I tweeted this or messaged back this long thing, mm. um, like a like a little pussy. But you know, I've been there. I've been there too, too. So I can't be surprised when people are so sensitive about things, because I was that guy before. Yeah. I mean, I'm just calloused, and comedy is like overtaking my life. And yeah, so I've been like just trying to make light of everything I can. No, that's fine. So I tried to make a joke about the Louis Anderson and Meatloaf dying. Yeah. So that was the stupid. It was a dumb. It sounded way better in my head, and I actually posted on Facebook. It was like you know, Louis Anderson. What did you die of? Eating old meatloaf? Ha ha ha. Yeah. Because they're both gone. So it's like two and one. Try to get it out of there. You know, I I don't. I don't mean to. uh, I don't know. Whatever it is, I may do. I don't know who Louis Anderson is. Oh, he's a Louis Anderson's a a stand up comic. He's a chubby dude. In the stand-up comedy world, he's very known, like, as far as, like, I'm trying to think of different things he does. He was, he's, his first appearance on TV, he was 32 on the Johnny Carson Tonight Show, mm. and he has, he, but he has a gap in his tooth, chubby. Let me bring up a yeah, picture Yeah, I might recognize him at least, yeah. Louis and I watch An- a lot of shit, so Louis like, I Anderson. figure I gotta know this guy, but Louis. I don't, the name is not grabbing me yeah louis anderson he looks old now well now he's freaking well yeah gone oh, yeah i'm gonna bring it up right here but yeah no meatloaf i remember it, it was funny you know like social media is such a strange thing because that's where you get a lot of your information you know not that that's necessarily good but things like this you know like i, I like <coughs> i'm not Go ahead. Oh, no. I'm not one to Google, you know, like, is Betty White alive every day? And yeah. if it weren't for social media, I would not know that Betty White is dead. Yeah. You know, I just wouldn't. And that's, but, like, I remember waking up at, but, Pol- or, uh, uh, not Pulp Fiction, Jesus Christ, Fight Club is such, like, a big cult classic that I've, I feel like since I got into it, I've seen so many other people get into it. And so I feel like for the last, like, 15 years of my life it's like once every three months i see somebody said 
Bob had bitch tits yeah, uh, on social, bitch tits, you know, yeah. on social media. And I woke up this morning, and that's the first thing that I read was Bob had bitch tits. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, meatloaf. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, yeah, no, somebody just discovered Fight Club for the first time. And then it was like midway through my day that it was like meatloaf died, and I was like. Oh, that's why that person put Bob had bitch yeah. tits. <laughs> I was like, oh no, uh, yeah. Meatloaf is dead. <laughs> like, so yeah, that took was the a... words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Must have been while you were kissing me, missing me. <laughs> By the way, the things he will do, uh, but he won't do that. Uh, he will do everything for love, but not that. He talks about in the entire song that people don't understand. It's like, what will he do? For love, then. Oh, would no. What won't he do for love, then? Like, yeah. He, and he says it. Like, he'll never forget her name or forget who she is and the time they had together. And he talks about, I'll never, you know, stop loving you and mm -hmm. blah blah blah. I'll do anything for love except not love you. Right. Pretty much is what he's saying. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so wholesome. Meatloaf, rest in peace. Yep. Um, good songwriter, uh, good performer for his weight, for his like size. Oh yeah, he's a very dynamic. Oh yeah, performer. no, no, yeah, he was, yeah, always bad out of hell. It was, a, I wasn't a big fan, but it was, uh, it's something to behold that guy. Yeah, no, performer so, out the ass for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, he was, uh, yeah. But yeah, Louis Anderson also here he is here on the okay. Johnny Carson, uh, Johnny Carson Tonight Show. Back in the day. Television. And he's going to be opening tomorrow night in Las Vegas, the new comedy store at the Dunes Hotel, and he'll be there through Sunday night. Would you welcome, please, Louis Anderson. Thank you, Thank you, I can't stay long. I'm in between meals, so bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> he's got classics. He's going to be, he's going to just diss himself the entire time. That's awesome. Self-deprecating humor oh, always yeah. works. I was just at McDonald's, and all those statistics just changed. So. <laughs> All right, I, I went shopping today. What's the all I got? Is this John Candy's dad, and nobody <laughs> knew it? I mean, they look so much alike, don't they? Yeah, him and John Candy. Yeah. I don't get this. Okay, it's anyways, one size fits all stuff. <laughs> being in California, being fat, and uh, try to get into this California life. Went to the beach the other day. Every time I'd lay down, people would push me back into the water. <laughs> Straight face. Hurry up, he's dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, back to the drawing board. Yeah. We're going to get a little bit... Uh, you said you had a... Did you have a glitch in the Matrix experience glitch in the matrix so not i mean i'm sure i've had a lot i've had plenty of deja vu things i've had you know other than the coffee cup experience i think my biggest glitch is actually um through dreams that i've had and that's another thing that like that's a whole probably other discussion to be had but um when i was younger Almost every single dream I had was a recurring dream. And every single time a series of dreams ended, I would never have that dream again. Like, there would always be, like, a, that's obviously the ending. And it was done. You know? And, you know, as I got older and I would reflect on those dreams, they just became weirder to me. <laughs> you know? Like, at times, like, some of them were nightmares. And so it was like, thank fucking God that thing's gone. You know? Um, I was having that every single night. It was awful. It was the only thing I would remember when I would wake up. And as I got older, I was just like, okay, that's not like, I, I dream all the time still. And I might have like a dream and I'm like, oh, I've had that dream probably fucking five years ago, you yeah. know, like, but that's, you know, like as I'm older and I'm learning about things and it's like, you know, they say you probably actually have like thousands of dreams every single night and they all just last fractions of a second. Like it's, you know, it's like the, the fact that those dreams are what my brain remembered, you know, even like the ones that 
I would have years apart as an adult. Seems weird to me that, you know, like I'm waking up, I'm remembering dream A, and I don't have that dream, and then five years later, the only dream I remember is a continuation of dream A, you know? Yeah. Weird. Weird. Like, that's what I don't understand. It doesn't benefit me. At yeah. All. Well, I, I have a kind of, that makes sense to me. Um, the dream world, I, I have, like, in a sense, created a, there's a whole other world that I live mm. in my dreams. Mm. Like, there, do you it, do it, like a lucid dreaming thing at all? I or? have before. Yeah. Um, and it's always been related to work, me having to get up. And uh, it's like in my dream, I'll be like, I got to get up for work. This is taking way too long. And they're like, I, I'm like, I'm telling people in the dream, like, I'm dreaming and I can't get out of this. Mm. I don't know what to do. And they're like, I don't know, try to like kick your legs or try to like breathe or like uh, open your eyes. And I'm like, oh. and sometimes it does work. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'll find my real body and somehow. And I'll be like, open my eyes and be like, oh my God, I'm awake. That and sounds like, like a weird blend of lucid dreaming and sleep paralysis. Yeah, it is. That's weird. Yeah, I've had, uh, it, it's been weird. We're, we're, we're in my dream where I got, this is a dream and I'll be like, check it out. You could like, I'm going to prove to you. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, have, I have this like floating thing that I do in my dreams to show people that I'm. So maybe I do lucid dream a lot. Yeah, if you, if you can control pretty much any aspect of a dream, you're technically lucid dreaming. Yeah, so I'll be like, check it out, and I'll have this thing that I do in my dream where I wish it it seems so real, and I wish I could do this in real life, just like lean back and then put my feet in the air and just start floating. Mm. And then, but then people in the dream just aren't impressed at all. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I've definitely had situations like that in dreams where I'm like so fascinated by something, and then it's just like, nope, that's literally what all of us are doing here. Like, any yeah. any one of us can do that at yeah. any moment. Doesn't I could, matter. I could turn into a dragon. And... Yeah, right, right. The only person that would be impressed is you, yeah. you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's like... yeah. We're we're part of your mind <laughs> yeah. fucking with you. Yeah, right, exactly. Um but uh the uh my matrix experience, like glitch in the matrix it happened recently and it's not that profound or that crazy. I you could be blamed on just being tired, but I'm driving and there's like an overpass and this is on uh what's that road i can't remember what road it is but anyway you get off of the broadway middle ridge exit going eastbound take a right and then you take a left on this immediate left on this road that goes towards yeah i drive on that road literally at for least always, three days a week and i for don't, 10 I years don't, i've been driving on that I road so i can't remember the name of that road <laughs> yeah i have no idea anyway um <laughs> anyway there's an overpass and i'm about to is there an overpass? Is it that road that I'm thinking of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there is like a little like bridge that goes over. Uh, what would that go over though? No, maybe there's no. not an overpass. Maybe I'm the overpass. But uh, uh oh maybe, yeah, no, maybe you I'm, would be the overpass. Maybe I'm thinking yeah. about 58 at some point um, mm -hmm. or something. I anyway, I'm on a road going, and there's an overpass where there's a highway. Uh huh. And uh, I'm driving, and I see like a semi truck parked. Like, I'm not looking at it, but it's like I see, like, a semi-truck just still, like, like frozen. Like, to, like it's parked on the overpass. I'm like, mm. oh. And while I'm driving, I see, I see it there, and I look up at it, and it just flies by. Like, it, like somebody hit pause on a movie. Oh, yeah, and then, but then it keeps going. And then, it, and then they, and I looked at it play, and it, it like, it didn't have, like, a build-up start. That's a weird thing. It was like, boom, and yeah. then boom. Yeah. Like, it, it's like, it's never stopped. It was just going. Yeah. So I was like, that was weird. And, I, and that's the last little glitch that I would, like, what I would call so, what yeah, people that, consider that's a glitch. That's legitimately a glitch in the Matrix. That's literally, like, within moments apart, Yeah. you saw something one way and then another way it happened. I mean, I'm sure I've had something like that, but... I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people just dismiss it and go, eh, whatever, yeah. it's, me. it's me. And it, usually that's what it is. Well, like, our brains are very complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. do a lot of crazy things. Deja vu is a weird thing. A lot of deja oh, yeah. vu experiences are people thinking ahead of themselves or they're 
in the moment in their their kind of brain is like their brain is kind of like almost thinking ahead of itself which makes when something when it while it's happening it got, feels like, like you did it like before that, right or something or yeah or even deja vu right like that's mm-hmm. deja vu i feel like for me mostly is it like expressed through um just super similar moments happening i mean obviously it's weird when like I specifically remember, like, standing in the exact same spot that I'm standing and the exact same event happens. But, like, as a performer, you know, I'm oftentimes, you know, like, one of the biggest ones for me is, like, the where I was like, oh, my God, like, that was weird, you know? And I can't remember exactly verbatim what was said to me, but all I remember is, you know, I, I was tearing down equipment. And it was like I was at the exact same place and the exact same person said the exact same thing to me. And I was like, I mean, I can't, I can't dismiss that as deja vu, but I also can't dismiss it as like, that's just something that this person says at this (laughs) exact time every time a musician is tearing down their equipment. You know, like that's, it felt weird. It felt weird, but, you know. This guy, man, I had deja vu the other day when I was playing. This guy yelled, free burn. Yeah, right, right. Have I seen you before, yeah. dude? <laughs> That's like, Heard the exact same thing in another right, club right. that I Your played at. Your voice sounds very familiar with that specific word. Yeah. Like, I swear, another drunk guy that sounds <laughs> just like you asked to hear Freebird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and obviously, like, most people that talk about deja vu don't have such... Well, well they think they don't have so much repetition, but I don't... I've probably met like probably a total of two people in my life that don't actually adhere to like a repetitious daily thing, you know, like, I mean, even if the people that are experiencing deja vu aren't experiencing it at a moment of repetition, you know, so say like nine to five jobs, if they experience deja vu outside of their nine to five job, their brain is still programmed for you know, eight hours a day for repetition. That makes they're gonna sense. they're gonna look for repetition outside that makes sense. of it. Yeah, you know? I was thinking. I, I think so. Like I was thinking because I've never experienced deja vu at work. Maybe I have, but it's so easy to dismiss because it's so repetitive. Yeah. But uh, outside of work is when I really. But most of my deja vu experiences are just a feeling of I've done this before. Like mm. I've dreamed this before or yeah. whatever. It, it always may be. feels kind of like out of body. And like in the moment, at least for me, you know, where it's like Yeah, it's never wait a minute. Yeah, to me <laughs> like, to me it's never so much like I saw a guy get into a car and drive off and then I turn around and then see the same guy drive get into the car and drive. It's not that intense. And I've heard of that those experiences too. That's um, a weird experience. That's a weird day. My mom says she's had that happen where somebody got into a car and, and then, drove off. And then she saw the, the same, same person, person get into the car. Like and within drive off. like yeah. seconds or like a minute at I'm least. I'm not or sure. Something. Right. Yeah. But no, that's weird. I mean, especially if it is. I mean, even within minutes, you know. She said she it was uh, it happened when she was a child, and, and I, I, she told me about it as an adult. So obviously, it's something that stuck with her that was just like blew her mind. Mm-hmm. But I have a compilation video All of a right. uh, little, just like interesting things on the internet that I thought are just interesting. Yeah. And there's always an explanation for anything, guys. I'm going to tell you this again. Don't believe in the matrix. I don't believe in a simulation. I think. The universe does exist in the, the cosmos. If you want to get real, I, I, people that do believe in a simulation, you're just as crazy as me as believing in a, a divin, uh, some kind of divinity or divine, yeah, yeah. divine creator. Yeah. yeah. So if a, like a software programmer is the same thing as a creator, mm-hmm. uh, somebody like a content creator, God, mm-hmm. God would be or whatever you call him would be the content creator for our lives. Right. The the. The guy that creates the simulation. Yeah. How do you feel about the simulation theory where uh, the creator literally just like you put some codes in something and just you know what? decided something would I'm... happen and doesn't have any involvement in it at all? Does that feel weird to you? As I, I'm asking is because you mentioned that you kind of believe in like divinity, right? Yeah, I believe in a creator. Well, now I have to backstep because now okay. I am almost a simulated 
I believe in simulation theory because I believe in God. So it's like, yeah, yeah, I that, believe that in that a is. creator. Yeah, so yeah. wouldn't that be like that is some technically sort of a simulation theory? Like, I, I would think so. Yeah, some sort of it's like li- it's creator. literally it's it's a moving hand. You yeah, know? like, like this watch was built by by creators. Like mm-hmm. like it was. There's a lot of mechanics involved, even with the solar system and the. Oh, I mean, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But when you have the infinite possibilities of the universe that people say, then obviously things, something's going to happen. But I look at it as I could put my clothes in the dryer like a million, like an infinity amount. of. In this theory, that means I could put my clothes in the dryer an infinity amount of times and open it up. And you know how some clothes fall out? Mm-hmm. I could open it up infinity amount of times and all of them will be folded. Yeah. Yeah. Like... To me, I think there's something there's something more intelligent involved yeah. in, in our lives, yeah. or in the world, in the universe. No, that's fair. That's and that's I love. Uh, I I had a friend who was super smart, super into science, and he was like, oh, like almost outrageously religious, you know. Like, and I don't really consider myself a religious person. Um, I you know maybe that comes from being forced into religion. Oh, yeah. You know I, yeah. who knows, but um. He always talked about the unmoved mover is what he would refer to any kind of God is if you want something to happen, something has to make it happen in all of known, you know, molecular world, you know, like something has to move it in order for it to be moved. And that has stuck with me you know like i don't i don't necessarily believe that somebody gives a shit what i do but i do believe that we're just the atoms of another thing so that's why i have to say i have to believe in simulation theory but like i don't you know whenever i think of simulation theory i i literally think of like somebody got some cheat codes to the sims and yeah, just were like yeah. i'm gonna make the sims yeah. be real fucking better than other these other people, right you know or something you know uh glitches in the matrix i'm gonna i'm gonna put on a compilation video and most of them are explained uh and explainable i'm just th- saying they're interesting things to see uh, people caught on camera and we're going to go through them one by one here on the fun box here with Jonathan Bellis uh, and here we go I got a video here and here we go the day I witnessed a glitch in the simulation let me know if you see it yes yeah, so we got two of those videos uh, a bird is just still in the sky but that one is weird to me that one is very weird. To yeah, me. the first one. Yeah, the first one. I still don't. I mean, the day I witnessed. I mean, I guess it's from a distance, simulation. so you can't really see Let any wavering. Yeah, how it just breaks but, away. Yeah, yeah. Like I understand, like you know, turbulence or whatever. But I don't, you know, I don't. I, I guess I don't know enough about it. I don't. Are these floating twig things too? Uh, there's got to be like a, a spider with just unbelievable web. I mean, and that exists. I mean, yeah. definitely. I mean, and so that's, there's got to be like a spider web that's it's caught in a web. Right. I mean, that's I don't know if you knew this, but there are spiders they've found that have they are able to sling webs across the oceans. Wow. Yeah, they can literally connect to their previous web. Are and, you fucking no, kidding me? They can literally make their way across the dude, oceans. Dude, the world. It's dude. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. This shit. No. <laughs> Oh my God! Fuck bugs, spiders. Yep. Yeah, for oh, real. Something's going on. <laughs> yep. They're gonna plot against us one day. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they can't. Another one of these twigs. The, this one is. Th- that's weird to me. You know, like, I get the. You know, like a, a, a spider is not heavy. You know, like I mean, yeah. even sl- like slinging a web across the ocean, that is impressive. But to sling a web to hold a twig, probably ten feet away, away from the tree, yeah, yeah, that shit's weird. Like they don't have a reason to do that. Yeah. Why the fuck would they do that? I don't know, but there's a lot of <sighs> bugs do a lot of weird things for no reason. I mean. We don't think there's a reason, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the theory. Like, I actually, it was funny. My my girlfriend's pretty into science. You know, I mean, that's her major. And so, you know, I was talking about like how, you know, on on, on a religious, really, thank you, a, a religious topic. Um, how like creationism could be like 
the creation of consciousness, you know, and that's actually evolution, you know, so everything could coincide. And she was like, well, I mean, that's true as far as we know. There's no saying that the spider doesn't have a conscious reason for moving this twig, uh-huh. you know, like, and, and, and it could have been just a, you know how we do things for no benefit except just to try to do it. People climb Mount Everest for yeah. no fucking reason. Right, right. Why are people climbing Mount Everest? If an alien came down and goes, people are dying to try to just reach the top of this mountain. Why? Right, right yeah. Well, well, they just want to. Uh, kind of prove something to people. What are they trying to prove? Ah, that they have the ability to climb to a mountain. Why? Why do you want to prove that? Right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's actually one of my favorite. And this will be the end of this tangent, probably. I guess. But uh, I I remember one of my best friends in high school talking about how his dad had a theory that uh, if aliens existed. The reason we don't know about them is because they're observing us. Yeah. Because they want to know what the fuck they're in for before they would do anything, you know? Yeah. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. And we we could potentially, if they exist, we could be potentially terrify them. Yeah. Like, of who, what kind of people yeah. we are. Yeah, they, they could just be like, they're fucking chaotic messes. Yeah, like, like, I don't, don't want to deal with like, that. Yeah, we, we could just go in there peacefully and they could just nuke us. There. We know they have the technology. We don't want that. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, that's like. Yeah, or, or the concept of us having the concept of people being able to love or hate is, uh, could be foreign to an alien they don't understand that way of thinking right so that alone could terrify them like right. oh, what is love well, that's, or what I, is I, hate i remember reading cosmos as a kid like carl i mean sagan or sagan however you want to whatever it actually is i don't know and his whole thing was like aliens would be extremely weird for people because they wouldn't be those green faced big eyed they would actually if if under our understanding of living life forms and consciousness, they would look more like us than we anticipate, you know, but they would have weird certain things different based on, you know, makeup and whatever else, you know, like molecular makeup. And so it would, we'd know that they were different, but it would be weird for us, you know, like I, I, I can't yeah. remember exactly what that chapter was saying. And I was a kid. Maybe I misinterpreted that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a, who knows? Who knows? I will continue uh, yeah, with this video. Yeah. Here. It's a simulation, you guys. In this video, YouTuber Brian Bernard claims that he captured a bird seemingly frozen in midair. <laughs> Yeah, that's a weird so one. Viewers have it is. I, I, in the video I also comments. don't. I just don't Every, like that the you know when he's saying like this this wind, person caught this bird and the you know like the, it's that waver, but it, it's also like in that like snapshot of like the black and white when it gets all serious, you know? Yeah. Like it it's it's obviously moving, you yeah. know? Like I don't understand why they didn't use a better freeze frame. Yeah, you know, I, 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 multiple theories. In the also, video. what I don't like about a lot of these videos is uh, they jump to conclusions too quick. Yeah, they do. There's no, uh, they don't allow any room for nuance. They're like, it's uh, it's frozen in midair. Well, it's not frozen. It's it's waving. It's going back and forth. You Ooh, correct. Can see it. So there, yeah, They'll obviously there. We know wind. wind to a so it's <laughs> moving. It's still it, moving. It is moving. It is moving. Still. Like but it itself is frozen, but that's because it it's midair. realized that the wind is as much of a force as it is. Yeah, you know. I understand that aerodynamics are crazy, but like this is that me. That still bugs me. I don't. I don't. Right. Yeah, that's a little weird. People far before I were much smarter than I. And that also kind of bugs me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The only reason why we know what we know is because we stand on the shoulders of giants. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That is a weird one right there. Yeah. So there's these high winds that happen that don't happen where we're at. 
wind can carry at different levels to where the engines are kind of competing competing against the wind right to where it's it seems like it's still but it's probably moving a little bit yeah but like could you imagine being on that flight and it's like landing will take approximately two and a half hours you will be a hundred feet above ground for two and a half hours it may feel weird but trust me it's just wind yeah, I, I would I would be bugged. I, I would I would be. And that's the thing. Like that's why flight times are different. They'll be yeah. like, oh, we have yeah. this. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a six-hour flight for this. It's like, why is it telling us so long? Because it's a windy, yeah. windy, yeah. windy. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing. Like I've only flown north to south, and that's pretty, you know, unaffected. You know, I mean, there there's some differences, but when you're actually combating, wind, like east to west wind. I, I could only imagine, you know, like... That was a weird one right there. Just standing right in place. Jesus Christ. Sorry, folks. Fasten seatbelts. <laughs> it's actually going to be a lot longer than we thought. <laughs> yeah. We're just going <laughs> to stay here for a the while. The wind down here really sucks. <laughs> makes you feel any better we are not using fuel right now we are just trying to fucking not crash yeah once again not a glitch i would say but this no. this one's weird too this one's just staying oh damn the same it has one of those banners flying behind it too yeah i don't know that why this made me think of it totally off topic and i'm sorry but I, I I just learned about how like the metaverse is buying hypothetical air for holographs. What do you know anything about? This? So it's like so like you know have you ever seen those pl uh, planes that fly above that like right like it's like almost a cloud and it's like a Geico head. Have you ever seen that before? I don't know. Not. not that I've only seen it one time, and it was in Pittsburgh. And it's like a plane is flying around, and I don't, I don't know the science to it, but it's literally, it looks like little clouds that are popping up, like I mean, ways away from the plane, and it's, it's saying like, try Geico, like in cloud. It looks like a cloud. No, I've never Super seen it. Super weird. Yeah. So that's real. That exists. And now they're saying like they're like so tech companies are buying pockets of air for advertisement. So if you're wearing goggles, you'll see a holograph of an ad. What? And yeah. Yeah. Dude, fuck this. <laughs> right. You know what sucks about getting older or being the age that I am like even however old you are. You're never going to experience what is going to happen oh, after, you, after we yeah, die, like yeah. the technology. Right. Oh, what. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What What is going to be yeah. what's after you? I mean, and that's, I mean, I mean, in our age group, you know, it. it's, that's even, when we're, you know, 70, 80 years old, what's going on? I mean, it's, what's nice is I don't necessarily think our age group is going to see the complete turn mm -hmm. to that you know like we'll have the real world but i i mean i'm saying like a hundred years out like you know i mean if you think about like covid which is a big thing now you know and if it was more deadly than covid is which that's something that's probably gonna exist in a century's time you're gonna need you know AI, you're going to need the metaverse. You know, I don't think we'll ever see the need for it. I mean, I hope not. Dear God, Jesus fucking Christ. If I had to wear goggles oh, to fucking yeah. talk, to do this right now. Well, now it's like you need <laughs> us, you need the internet. Well, yeah. To yeah. like apply yeah. for jobs yeah. and yeah. Or order. And I mean, and that's literally like literally the baseline of what the metaverse is. I hate even the fact that I'm. I turned 30 in, like, two months, and I hate the idea that I'm going to need the, where, where, what I'm going to see, you know? <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> yeah, to make a compilation video of these planes just still Dude, in the I air just creep it. me out. Especially because I hate flying. 
Yeah, flying's a little weird. All right, there. Here's a weird one. Okay. All right, not flying. I'm, I'm, All right, not flying. Uh, this I'm, one. I'm ready for sheep. This one <laughs> is interesting, and I know there's a reason for it. It's just they're not. Still, this is not camera trickery, and you can see one of these sheep are eating. But check this out. That one up right on the left. Oh yeah, is it is moving. Yeah, it's a bunch of sheep in a pass. A- I'm gonna believe that one up there was eating. And I'm going to believe that a tornado was 0.5 miles away from beginning. I'm, I'm the animals are weird. I'm I'm going to I'm going to yeah. convince myself cuz I have to. Yeah. Or else I'll lose <laughs> yeah. my fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like That's, what is happening? Yeah. Why? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Two daughters. No. All right, this one is weird. A lot of people will consider this in the ghost category. I don't. This is in a glitch category. Um I honestly don't know how to explain this. What I do understand with technology and digital cameras, they have software that have an AI puts in different things to make up the capture. So if you zoom in, AI will make up it's pixels. It. It's yeah, co- yeah, it'll yeah, correct yeah. things. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. So if it's like a glitch, if it's a potato camera or a shitty camera, the software broadcasting it or using it might do something to manipulate the AI might do something to put in things that aren't there. Oh yeah. Even, even new good cameras do something like that. Like that's, I've got like, you know, Apple has this new uh, cinematography mode where you can change focus. And, and even that adds, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like, uh, a non-existent character you know right. like it, it it's 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 focusing so much and focusing on not focusing that the in-between feels fake yeah. and so if a movement happens that it doesn't capture then it'll create a you know potentially silhouette of something right you know? so all right this is uh the reactions are genuine i don't believe this is any kind of uh fuckery i just think it's interesting. Recorded while out for a drive and singing along to the radio. Now, for obvious copyright reasons, I've removed most of the Adele song that they were singing. But watch what happens and check out the girls' reactions. All right, look at the baby chair in the back. baby was it always that <laughs> that little hump is this weird. video was originally so I'm saying it many it does glitch out though if you look at it when the light was there like it does pixelate occurrence. a little bit but that wouldn't really make any sense According to the original poster, the car they are driving had no previous owners, and certainly no child had ever passed away in the vehicle. See, I hate that. Jumping to conclusions again, like people dying create ghosts. I don't even like that dialogue. I hate it. We talked about it last episode. You're jumping to just because people die constantly. This is just the world that we just die. Yeah. And to suggest that every haunting is a, I'm just saying, if the simulation theory, it's a whole different thing. There couldn't ghosts don't even mean anything in this at that point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Some video commenters believe that this video appears more like some strange glitch of a baby randomly appearing in the car seat. But what do you think? Is this clip a glitch in our supposedly simulated reality? Is it a ghost caught on camera? 
or is it just a bizarre cam? You know, malfunction? this is one of those things where I, I would I would assume that you're trying to focus on two subjects, and so obviously something's weird happening in the middle. Yeah, you know, I mean that makes sense software wise to me, but that's I know I, I don't I'd be like well I don't I won't get into the like you said you guys covered the whole <laughs> supernatural yeah. possible thing last week so yeah late checkout all right this video god damn fucking Stanley Kubrick I thought you died yeah. all right this one's weird I have yeah. this uh, I think this is the last one and. uh because there's not really any compelling video of glitches in the Matrix. I, like I said, I think glitches in the Matrix, if there are glitches in the Matrix, happen within us, then we see it. I don't believe in the Matrix. I, I'm just saying the concept of it, and I think people more have their own personal testimonies about it in, okay. the, in their life. But yeah, here's... Uh, this little story that I thought was a little Hell in freaky. Western Texas. Matthew says that when business is slow, he takes a break in the back room, where the hotel's video security system is located. One day, while glancing at the monitor, he spotted something extremely bizarre on the hotel's cameras. Matthew whipped out his phone to record the incident. I think this guy froze. Literally. What the f I'm just gonna let this whole thing play in and then we'll replay and I'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, please do that, because I don't. See, all the other cameras. Okay, he, he's gonna explain. Oh it. shit, those people. Okay. The guy, I, from, I was, the guy was, from Nukes Top 5 will explain it. And then we'll talk about it after that. Yeah, he is literally there. It's not the camera that's frozen, it's him. There he is. This dude is f***ing still. Uh, <laughs> what the f Only when somebody And then somebody came in here like yeah, moved. You can see that yeah, the security that's... feed is not paused. Other cameras continue to record motion in and around the hotel lobby, but this guy just doesn't move. I had the opportunity to talk to Matthew Alvarez directly about the video and ask questions. I have to say that I did not get the vibe that the video was a hoax. To expound on that, number one, Matthew was not trying to promote anything to get views. In fact, this video has never been posted anywhere else before. Yeah, I, I can't two, find this Matthew video anywhere. Matthew was fine with his real name being mentioned in the video. He just sent it and number was a three, fan of the he even gave me the Top 5 and sent him the video. The hotel, huh. Which I chose to leave out to preserve his anonymity. So, it's up to you. Is this a glitch in the matrix caught on camera? Or is it just a strange, creepy security camera Can malfunction? We, okay, okay, yeah. That That's, uh, is that is, is there any way to, like, he even gave me the look super the hotel, slow down? down. Uh, do you have that ability? I don't know. Uh, I don't fucking guy? know anything. <laughs> All I want to, because it even seems like he doesn't move until the other person is, That's what like, I'm saying. like, three steps into the room. All right, all right so we all see... You guys all saw what I see. You got, we all see this video. Yeah, right. Here's that, my explanation. And that's I, fine. I think this guy could be a street for, for, for performer okay. that's practicing. Right. He, like, I've done weird, stupid stuff alone when yeah, I'm alone. Yeah, and that's fun. And it's, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. He could be fucking with the camera. Yeah, totally he could. could be, yeah, you're um, right. He could be... Um, stoned out of his mind. Oh, yeah, that's And true. he's just like... I've been there in a movie theater before, just like, if I move, they know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he's staying still, and he's like, I wonder how long I could stay still like this. Just a weird, like, fun yeah. little game he's playing with himself. Who right. knows? Who right. knows yeah, what? Yeah, who knows? But that's more realistic. That That's more... The chances of that are way more than... A fucking Matrix glitch, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, than a simulation. That <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That, that, that's a good point. <laughs> the, those are the. There's more yeah, way the, more. The, 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 yeah, yeah. Your the realism trumps. Yeah. Just fucking yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like chances are, uh, you, there's a there's the pipes are making noise in your house rather than a dead person yeah. haunting you. Yeah, growing up in an old house and doors slamming. 
I get that now as an old person. Uh, oh yeah. my God, I just called myself an old person. But as an older person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those things make sense. This does freak me out. It is weird. Though, solely because I swear I see the person in the back make like three steps this before this person moves. This guy looks still as, like he looks Dude, like he's frozen. Beyond. Yeah, yeah, no, that's... A, a breathing person would move more than that. You know, he's holding his breath right now. If yeah. he's fucking with us. And it's so hard to tell. Like the But then again, it could be a fucking glitch in the Matrix and it's all a simulation. Yeah, he is literally there. It's I mean, the I'm not. I, I will hand. not discount there that. Because, I mean. This dude is fucking still. I mean, if you're talking about the possibilities of the universe. That one is a big one. I just don't know why he starts moving oh, when. That's what I'm saying. Right when that. Per- that's what I'm saying. Like if we can fix. Somebody walk this way too. Feed is not paused. It's so hard to focus on two Other places at fucking once. Motion in and around the hotel lobby. Sorry if you guys are listening to this. Go on YouTube. And uh, watch the video. No, yeah, that person is moving at least three steps before that. The main person is moving. Yeah. So it's a it's either an act or it's a... He's frozen in a glitch yeah, in the right, matrix. Yeah, right, right, right. What the uh, fuck yeah, is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. But like it's I said, either an act or that, out of all yeah. the videos, was that the most compelling? I thought that was the most compelling uh, of, of the videos that we show. Well, it's of, the only that one I that like I don't have like... A weird scientific answer for yeah you the know, sheep like, the sheep one it's like they they're they work as a herd and yeah they, they kind of like both catch each other's vibes yeah and if everybody's fro it's like I'm gonna keep eating because a lot of them were just eating yeah yeah a lot of them had their head too close to the ground to tell the yeah. one I mean they even kind of like zoomed in a little bit to show that it was like it looked weird. But a lot of them had that, like, hunched back into the ground. There was only probably, like, four or five that were, like, alert. But, I mean, that's, from my understanding of, like, herds and stuff like that, there is, I mean, they have that, like, assigning character that, like, we think is human, but is actual animalistic, you know? Like, that's, it's like, there are only so many of them that are assigned to be on alert, you know, I mean, and you could just be looking at like the leaders of the herd, you know, like, I mean, makes sense. who knows? I don't know. That one was weird. I mean, uh, it it was, it, it, but that's like, you wouldn't like my main issue with that video was you would not have noticed that one towards the house eating yeah. without them zooming in on it. Right. Right. And that was like the closest leaning well, I'm over. I'm glad they did because otherwise it looked like. A still frame, and then they just moved the image like that to make it look like the camera was zooming in. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, so I'm glad. I, I, I do see. Yeah, I'm glad they because you can see movement in the in the sheep eating. But yeah, because yeah. uh, it does look like somebody took a picture. Yeah, and they're just holding it. Uh, yeah, and, and it's like, the oh, like, what a glitch in the Matrix when really you're just fucking frozen. filming a photo. Yeah. You know, like maybe you know, like that's. But that's the thing. Like you need movement in these videos all right what's on your mind episode 75 Talking about Fight Club earlier. Yeah, bit. yeah. This uh, that movie brought this song back a little bit. Oh, totally. It was totally. a song came out in the late '80s. Yeah, yeah. The Where Is My Mind? Yeah, is what yeah. It is. yeah. Oh no, definitely. That's actually there's a, you know, I mean, I don't. There's a in the new project that I'm doing. There is a there's a couple songs that get referred. I, I I'm almost always referred to as either a the cure or the pixies there's a couple songs that i did that um people really cling to and they just really focus in on those bands and and actually we just started playing those songs live and 
you know, like, you're a musician, you know, there's a difference between, like, writing a song and performing a song with a band, and, like, the energy that just exists in being in a band that you don't expect, um, and when I sing these songs live, it's literally, like, all I can think about is fucking the cure well you know like it's like it's pretty amazing the cure is the shit man i saw him live at the uh gun i was about to say the gun hey that's all i know it as i don't even know what the fuck it what uh, is it now uh, who owns that shit yeah i have no idea but anyway but yeah um amazing play stage I saw Coldplay too. <laughs> That's the only reason I say that is because the only band that I've ever actually seen at that venue is Coldplay. Oh yeah, I yeah. saw the Black Keys there. I saw Corn. Dude, I saw Black Keys at the Agora. I saw Lincoln Park there. Oh yeah, the Black Keys at the Agora. That's yeah. a nice venue for that. It was literally it was two weeks after Attack and Release came out. Right. Yeah. And then the next time I saw them was for a hundred and fifty thousand people at the at Bonnaroo. Very different experience. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. I, I, and that's the crowd like, makes a difference in the show. Oh, for totally, sure. totally. Well, I mean, and that's actually like I'm not a fan of the band. You know, I'm of the Black Keys. I'm a fan of the Black Keys, but I'm not. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about I'm transitioning to Twenty One Pilots. Not a fan of the band. But I saw them at the Grog Shop um, probably 2011, 2012. And that guy was fucking climbing around the ceiling and shit like that. Fucking a performer out the ass. Both of them were. And it was like, it was one of those moments where it was like, I don't really care for the music, but if this band doesn't become fucking it, who will? You know, uh, yeah. like their performance was outrageous, outrageous. And I doubt it's what it is now. You know, like that's. But no, they were good. I, uh, yeah, I had a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for 21 Pilots mm-hmm. uh, being as young as they. Uh, well, I'm 38. So, yeah, like uh, they're probably not, my age. No, I'm getting. I guess. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm getting to a point. Like the older I get, the more like knuckleheaded I feel in my 20s. I was so serious, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, bands. Oh, my God. And then I just felt like it was too much work for the payoff was nothing. And I was just like, why am I so fucking serious all the time? Like, this sucks. Yeah. I'd rather just, like, do my own, like, do my own thing. I don't even like being in a band anymore. Like, bands suck to me. I love listening to them. You know, the whole thing about me, I'm 50-50 on listening to music and being a a listener and just being part of the audience and performing. I'm like 50-50 on all of it. So I don't really know what I want to do. I, would, do I want to be a, a listen, uh, sit back and listen or do I want to perform? And performing, there's it, there's so much, a, it, it cause, it's so much of a grind for that. Yeah. It's real hard. Yeah. So I kudos to anybody that, yeah, Sticks I mean that's out. my only thing is like I I started off being a person that was you know I felt torn, but I remember there was a time actually I think it was seeing Truth Monster at the at uh, the Prague that I w- I was just hanging out with my mom. Truth Monster Spotify, look it up. Yep. You got three albums Hell on yeah. Spotify. Truth Monster, Donald Stafford, Brian Bunn. Hell yeah. And I was there at the Prague with my mom, and I remember I I didn't think anything of this, you know, and and it just stuck with me ever since. And I realized that I do it, is, you know, we were there, and my mom goes to see music for fun, you know, um, and I do too, but it, she looked at me, and my mom said, "Are you having fun?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" And, and she was like, you just, you're analyzing literally every single thing that those people on the stage are doing right now. And I can't imagine that being fun. And, I mean, I, I do do that, you know. Like, I was not, like, I could not disagree with what she was saying. But I find that analytical mind fun. You know. Oh yeah, it's very. Like I, just I, do. I do the same thing. I like that's. I'm I, like I. For me, when I'm mostly 
which sucks so bad. This is going to be so boring to people when the drums are playing. I because uh, to me that's the hardest thing to mic and uh, to yeah, get the sound off of uh, <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. overhead mics and and stuff. Uh huh. And I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Like, this is really hitting hard. And dude, I, I a lot of shows I I'm at the soundboard and I'll see this guy doing the soundboard. And, and um, a good show, the guy is literally changing things constantly. Yeah. And he's monitoring that board, and he's constantly moving and yeah. twisting yeah. knobs. Adding the dynamics. He's twisting yeah. knobs. That's a good sound guy. Yeah. I you love know? doing that stuff. Really yeah, I that do. stuff is like cool that. as hell. Yeah. Like, uh, like I'll be, I'm constantly twisting knobs all the whole show. I'm like, oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Up. I mean, I'm hearing too, and that's actually there was a. Uh, you know, I mean, it was funny because I realized, you know, us both being sound guys, it's kind of funny because I, I remember I got comfortable leaning back and I saw you going and I was like, oh, fuck, he's adjusting it. Like, so I tried to compensate as you were trying to compensate. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, just a, there's a lot of because I want you to feel comfortable. Oh, no, I do. No, this, so, the, like, no, this is awesome. It really yeah, is. So it's but, like, yeah, so it's like, yeah, so you don't have to worry about anything like uh, I, uh. A lot of people are real casual and they want to stay and stand away from the mic, which I always try to tell people to stay like a good fist length away from the mic. Yeah. That's how you get that broadcast sound right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh. That broadcast sound. I don't I'm have going that to effect on my voice. Your, your, your soul. Your soul. Your soul. Fuck your baby. Fuck your baby. Fuck your eat your asshole. 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 All right. My asshole's burning. <laughs> oh, dude, don't. <laughs> I, uh, red pepper flakes and, uh, jalapenos will do that. Oh, all right. Dude. The top 10 memes. Okay. Right, we got to go. Oh, over shit. It. Okay. Yeah. Top 10. Yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. all good. This is a nice yeah. episode of, uh, just casual yeah, I'm digging podcast it. type what, stuff. What, what's the timeline? What are we at right now? I uh, we're know. at about, um, Two hours and fifty minutes, but that's without the commercials. I mean, that's with all everything. Right, that's right. with that's the beginning. A, from, yeah. from the beginning when I first hit, hit uh-huh. record. So, all right, all right. Cool. Yeah. so it's okay. When, when I put out the regular video, it'll probably shorten to like two yeah. and a half hours. Right, right. right. Yep. And uh, so here we go. Top ten memes episode. 75 i've cu- i've done this we've been trying to get into this for a long time now in the past 30 minutes and we already did the intro so i don't have to do that anymore <laughs> I, was about, I was about to do the intro to the top 10 memes again yeah hey. all right top 10 memes number 10 heads up guys there are some real weirdos in this group Someone messaged message me asking to meet up in the woods for a naked satanic ritual, and then they didn't even show up. Sorry, guys, that was me. Um, so what happened was, you know, things get weird when it comes to meeting up sexually in <laughs> satanic rituals. I like I there I I cross booked. I oh, cross booked. It, it I'm sorry. Oh, it was sexually. I would have been there if I knew it was sexually. Okay, so there was three. Did you just go? You you went to the wrong one. That's fine. I mean, and then so that's just on me. I'm sorry, guys. I I thought you know I, yeah. you know. But yeah, was, this is the Facebook group, the uh, Fun Box Facebook. There's about almost 800 people in this group, and it's called, oh, so this is not global. No, this is. I'm called, literally talking to people. This is called the Fun Box Group. This is where we get our memes from. Okay, and. Uh, they don't obviously memes are memes. Uh, yeah, you know where memes came from. You know where the original first meme was, where it wasn't called a meme. It's the Trojan it, horse, right? No, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I have no idea. No, uh, uh, an original meme in World War II. There was a thing called Killeroy was here, and nobody. Oh knew, yeah. Nobody knows if it was a, a World War, if it was a Russian guy, or if it was a. German guy, or oh, if so it was Dr. an American, Pepper just kind of took over Kilroy. Didn't so Dr. Ki- Pepper do that? Isn't Did he? it was a Dr. Pepper? I guess for some reason, I feel like there was a soda group that took over Kilroy. Probably. Yeah. Well, okay. Kilroy was the first meme, like where people just 
saw it, and then they kept writing it on walls. So memes usually were were on walls. Graffiti. So, so Kilroy, yeah, and that's I remember. There's actually a good friend of mine. Not to get too off topic, I don't want to get into it, but he um he's studying linguistics and talking about how emojis are technically our days hieroglyphic hieroglyphics you know like so like conversation from hieroglyphics extended into language which is extending into emojis which can circle back if you're going into things as being like a like a, a universal language can emojis can be yeah okay i got you right yeah. right so hieroglyphics yeah. are left for not a native tongue but for another civilization to come in and understand oh i see what is being written right do we understand it i mean we we have came to an understanding of hieroglyphics now yeah have you we know? have we, we they didn't not tell us how the pyramids were built or why no, no. I mean, well, <laughs> maybe they were like, "Oh, they're fucking." Maybe it was so a matter of fact. It was like it's just a fucking pyramid. Yeah, yeah. This is literally <laughs> just like, hey, like a stack of stones. We guys. want to talk to these people that might migrate here. Let's talk to them. Yeah. Those other people, we assume, are also building pyramids. <laughs> you know? Dude, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that, that's all theory. That's yeah. all linguistic theory. But I remember there was a guy that I knew that was going into linguistics. That that was his like major yeah. topic of study. And I haven't talked to him in ten years. So maybe that came to a moot point. I don't know. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was cool, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Number nine. Ted Jensen posted this. Apparently, this is a new fad. We had a good run, America. Time to shut it down. <laughs> Buck teeth? I don't. I is don't... that like? It looks like a character off of like the Grinch. Remember Did that this movie? Have... Yeah. Yeah. Cindy Lou Who is definitely the bottom left, but like modern day if Kanye made fucking the grinch i think i i I believe it's probably a new fad but it's for like specific people i mean this is like people i the the more you realize how much money there is in the world you know well and that's and like the gem on the teeth thing like even people that have their like fangs gemmed like that i know that's a thing there's a whole culture of people with so much more money than we have they have their own culture that they literally just like like the island boys, island boys, like they have very trying very to make trying it. to make it. I'm an I'm island, island boy, boy. <laughs> and I'm dun, dun, dun. yeah. But they they have very rich. Keep one one. I don't I don't even. <laughs> no I'm idea. not sure. <laughs> Two the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is. Uh, I literally actually just downloaded TikTok within the last three months um i mean i I, i'm not gonna hate on it like i mean it definitely has its place it's not good for people (laughs) (laughs) definitely is not good for people what what is neither is complex carbohydrates Uh, those aren't good either (laughs) <laughs> you can have one steak a day and five TikTok likes. <laughs> moderation is key. Yeah, moderation is key in everything. <laughs> All right. Uh, number eight. Joe Messer. Elton John is amazing at piano, but he sucks on the organ. <laughs> Until we meet again. Uh, oh, you know... I don't know why I'm booing. All it. I gotta say is I I remember I don't have a gay you know like a no. gay button. <laughs> <laughs> when Elton John did Stan with Eminem at the Grammys, I don't know if you ever heard that. Yeah, he, I saw he, that. Yeah, yeah. Where because he, he had like faggot in his lyrics or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He it that. That shit was, uh, you know, you He's like proven to people like I'm not homophobic. This is just my culture. We call people faggot to demasculine them, and uh, which I totally understand. Right, I totally understand. I mean, it, it's not. Listen, folks, 
they're just words. Yeah. Yeah. And people, I don't even care, even if you're a racist bigot that uses the N-word, it is just a word. And I'm not going to say it. I would never say it to somebody, and it's wrong. I, but then again, it's wrong to call somebody the F word. It's wrong to call people names. Yeah. Like, be nice to each other. That's the entire point in life, guys. Be nice. But they are just words. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I, I anyway. remember getting into a big topic with, uh, you know, like, my, my family has super rich friends in Kentucky, and they didn't like how much I said fuck. <laughs> they they hated it actually. Like they were they were like they were like oh speak of the devil you know we're talking about this guy saying fuck all the time. Oh my god! And I was like literally like if this is the thing that you guys are fucking upset about right now, say you know fucking right. upset. It's <laughs> fucking like a, upset about. It's like, it's like a comma. Yeah, it really is. Like it's not you know like the n word. You know, like there, there are things that, like, you know, like as placement holders, maybe you know, like reevaluate things. You know, I guess you know, like, I mean, I've, to say that change isn't happening and to negate that change, I'm not. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll full blown. Like, if somebody ever told me they were offended by me using a word, you know. Nine times out of ten, I would say, okay, I'm done, you know. But to say fuck, if they if if saying the word fuck offends somebody, that word has no association with you, yeah, whatsoever, except that your parents fucked to make <laughs> yeah. you, you know, like or you're just you know, you're like, just, you're just like programmed. It's bad. Yeah, exactly, and that's it. exactly. But there's nothing to say that like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like even if a yeah. Yeah, I totally get it. We can get on a whole philosophical conversation about curse words, too. Yeah, yeah. All right, number seven. Taco Bell. I posted Taco Bell, whole crew smokes weed but can't roll a fucking burrito. <laughs> and then Dina Lindo, one of the Patreons of this podcast, she's like, they must roll pinner joints because they're barely filled with anything. <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah, Dina. Way to go. Way to bring the meme up. To be fair, I've ruled probably 20 spot on anybody would eat them burritos. I've only ruled one spot on joint in my entire life. Oh, you know, that is a thing. It is a, I have a problem with joint rolling. Yeah. I, I get vertigo when I do it. Yeah. No, like I, like I got I get it. dizzy. The rule's fine. And then like when it comes time to shine, you know. It's well, just like here's the my best advice to you, and I, I this is me preaching to myself. Okay. Don't think about it. Yeah. Act well, like, that's the best act like I ever sur- ruled. Act was... like you're surrounded by a bunch of naked, hot Latino women. It was literally like it that, was. It was literally like I mean, act like you're surrounded I've... by naked, hot Latino women that don't know how to roll joints. Yeah. Yeah, and well, and it was literally like <laughs> I like every joint I ever you're like, rolled. Oh, I got this. Was for me, <laughs> and it just crumbled in my hands. But this moment, it was like. I don't know why they have to be Latina. I just think they're very sexy. <laughs> Brazilian. Yeah. Well, this moment, it was literally like, I've got to roll my joint for me and, like, it was, like, the dealer at the time. Oh, I got you. You know, so, like, the pressure was fucking on, you know? Like, yeah, and yeah. I was in the passenger seat of a car. We were going to go for a fucking ride and shit, and I was just like, I've got to get this. I I've actually, got, roll, like, and I actually roll better under pressure. When I roll, like, we used, we went for a trip to Nashville, and we pre-rolled everything, mm. and, uh... Uh, we so we had like a pack of like just joints, you know. And he was like, Rob, "They're like Rob, let's roll joints together." So I'm like, "All right." We had a pile of weed, bunch of papers. I can't roll shit. I'm yeah. like, "What the fuck?" And there's no pressure. Yeah. But when I went to the Lava Room Studios in Cleveland. Uh, my band oh, recorded damn. there. How fucking is that still a thing? I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Like that's I'm I we're literally like that's my first band contemplating on recording there. And I mean, my band my- Autumn and Florence recorded there. I get yeah. Let me see if I can find uh, the video of that. 
not of me rolling joints, but of that <laughs> yeah. night. Yeah, no, definitely. There was a de- a lot of deals that Lava Rooms had. Say they had nighttime. Oh no, deals. totally. Yeah, no, I I, I remember looking into it because yeah, uh, my my first band was. I mean, when we we're talking ten years ago, we were looking for studio time, and Lava Room just was just kept coming up. I think up. the video has been taken down. Apparently, it really sucks. Don't know why somebody deleted their account. Damn, dude, that's fucking... Well, Lava Room, they did have a lot of ties with a lot of, like, the shitty Peabody's booking groups that just took advantage of a lot of people. So I think that, I think there's, like, a window of when they were, like, authentic, but they ended up kind of being shady, I think. I, I, I guess maybe, you know, maybe I'm blacklisting myself. Maybe I'm not. Yeah, they I, took it down. Wow, that sucks. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, I rolled a doobie. I actually went into Studio B or Studio A, one of the stu- other studios. There were some rappers mixing down a record. And um, I I knocked on the door and opened it up a little bit and was like, hey, any of you guys got any papers? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we got a... Um, I don't know. They're not black and milds or something else. And uh, you have to crack them and and release all the tobacco. You know what I mean? Uh, like a cigar. Kind of. What was the one? What was the big? Uh... Blunts is what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. I, I was thinking of something else. There, there was a big... Uh, it, it, they looked like cigarettes, but they were technically cigars. Cigarellos. Not even cigarellos. That's God. what they had. They had cigarellos. Okay, okay. We had cigarellos. But I'm never mind. I thought that you were. We, no, say no, no. We might be on the same page still. I uh, God. They clove. Clove cigarettes. Oh yeah, fuck those. Yeah, those uh, things were fucking like Ugh. Anyway, there we got cigarellos and I'm like, all right, I'll buy a cigarello off you guys. And they're like, No, we'll just give you one. And then they gave me one, and then they gave me a cracker, which is a round circle with a bl- razor blade on one side, and you put the cigarillo in, and it sl- you slide it across the cigarillo, and it splits it for you. I'm like, this is the shit. They're fucking so ready, dude. I knew these guys would be fucking ready yeah. to get. They know how to roll fucking blunts and joints yeah they know they're rappers they're cleveland rappers right they're well dude like the black biggest, guys that love black and mild the biggest uh rap producer in cleveland i think i mean maybe i'm wrong but was uh do you remember like salt the wound i do yeah he the, that producer for salt the wound who is also a guitarist of it and like i mean i think he's like fucking either in warner brothers or columbia as like a big record producer right now and yeah that's he 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 left playing guitar for salt the wound he was their producer he started producing cleveland artists i think he's huge now i really i I guess i don't actually know but i i feel like within the last like two months like i saw his name pop up and it was like a credit on something fucking dumb. Well, good for him, yeah, man. Yeah, Hell no, yeah. That's uh Dude, anybody that comes from our fucking like corner of the earth. Yeah. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Yes, there yeah. we go. Absolutely. Things... Even though it has nothing to do with me. Like, no, that's, no. It won't benefit well, it makes me, me like, at least that's... it makes me feel like things as long as you're persevere and you drive, you're like, yeah. dude, people will bring you down. Oh no, so he much. Yeah, I know that guy is he, I mean, he might not be a millionaire, but he is making his money on yeah. producing music, you know. And the only person that's going to bring you down the most is yourself, man. Fuck, oh, yeah. Fuck everybody else. Oh, yeah. And I, that's why I'm 38 doing a podcast in my garage, because I fucking, fucking ruined. I, I didn't capitalize off of anything. Yeah. I was always a hippie the yeah. entire time. Yeah. No, that's – and that's one thing that I've realized in the last year is um, – Well, also talent. I suck. <laughs> you don't suck. <laughs> but that's – I mean, no. I mean, it, it really comes down to, you know, like it's, uh, it, it's your willingness and 
I, I guess, ability to well, there self-market. Are, there, you know, yeah, I mean, it's there like, is a level of insanity with some people, though. Like you've seen like real people audition for like the American Idol thing. Some of those are real people. Yeah. That well, that's they like, think they're yeah. like the next thing. Yeah. And they start singing, well, and you're start, like. The fa- my favorite part was the end. You know, when you stopped singing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, but that, that also, I've, I've seen that actually kind of ruin people, I think. I mean, maybe not, but um, I've met, okay. I think you need to have people to verify if you're good. Yeah. Well, and that's like, I don't want to, I'm not, that. this is one thing where like, I won't name drop, but there was a person that was on one of those this networks. This is going to be a long fucking episode, dude. Yeah. It's all, it's okay. I mean, keep going. It's if a podcast. If you're cool with it, that's cool. I'm fine. Right. This is the fun box. Yeah. It, it, it happens. It, it okay. happens. It happens. Yeah. It happened last week, actually. Okay. Which, two weeks in a row, we got two long ones. Yeah. But like it's a it, it was a local person that was on one of those things that a lot of super talented people clung to, and when that other super talented person that was on one of those networks, nothing happened with. Nothing happened with the other people, like they stopped, like they were done, you know, like they thought they found their thing yeah and that thing did not meticulate and i like i mean you know like two of those people i know are fucking just talented out the fucking ass you know like they i mean i i've i've seen so much music and I've I've seen so much local music, and the fact that those people stopped was hard for me, you know, like as a local person doing it, because if somebody was gonna get it, it was them. Yeah. You know, so it 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 hurt, you know. And I remember even one of them, I had a conversation with about it, and they were just like. Yeah, no, it's it's pointless. Honestly, dude, I hear a lot of these stories in the in our area, the Cleveland area, and it's like uh very toxic to me. I uh really really think this area needs a more positive vibe behind like why are people looking at making it? I, it it's really weird. Like do your art and then be happy. Yeah. Uh, and then who cares if you're signed to Warner Brothers or Oh yeah. whatever it well, is. Well, no, that's I I, I get well, my age group, we it was the whole getting signed thing was a big deal. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's and gone now. It's anyways. gone. Yeah, 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 it's gone. Right. You, you don't need to get signed. No. You just need to create a buzz yeah. get viral make mm-hmm. a video that goes viral right um if you make one video that goes viral you're good you yeah. could go on fucking oh yeah oprah no, that's... i was gonna say oprah that's how antiquated i am <laughs> no but that's like like one of my guitarists in the slow ma- mono band that i'm in um he's working stage hand he actually asked me to uh tonight if i could help him out at the beachland for this band called mother mother who i guess is just like they were nothing and then they had a viral song on tiktok you know and and beachland ball they're sold out just from fucking one viral video you know like it's weird yeah beachland Beachland, i tried to book a gig at beachland tavern i had a whole lineup had three other bands to come on with me Uh i was the head guy that booked everything and um had it all set in place they they were working with me with it and then last minute they said oh we got to move the date to like this is that cool and i'm like no yeah (laughs) everything's fall 
falls apart. You fucking move the date? No. They can't do that date. Yeah. Now. Yeah. That's uh, so Beachland they they are awesome. They actually pay you pretty good. Um but you grog shop if there's a venue in Cleveland for you to book a show uh grog shops that's that's their thing. Um but Beachland is definitely a uh you're kind of at their mercy. Yeah, and you have to uh, if you wear fitted hats and Adidas shoes and you don't smell like a thrift shop, you can't play there. You're not allowed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a hater. No, you're fine. That's funny. I mean, the, the, the elephants <laughs> had a lot of really good times at the Beachland Tavern. Gotta but... gotta shop at a thrift shop to play there. You got you have to have nice little fucking leather shoes. You gotta fucking wear your goddamn fucking. Whatever you got to do, you got to do shit. Dude, I was in a pretty goddamn cool band when I was booking some shit. Yeah. And uh, they did not want any part of it. Gotcha. But yep, whatever. Yep. Keep it on go. Keep, <laughs> Keep it, on it on going. going. Let's see this other meme. I'm now. not a hater. Well, damn, we were talking about Taco Bell that whole time. <laughs> well, I didn't realize. <laughs> All right. Number six. After suck selfies are trending again. Oh, dear God. Oh, my God. I got to do something here. Is that the fucking guy that invented the AIDS pill? <laughs> <laughs> it's really look at this. After suck selfies. Okay, so we're. Uh, uh, it's implying that the priest molested the kid which i totally okay okay i missed this i totally agree with yeah oh now the kid's molesting the priest is that what you're saying no the the, the priest totally molested the kid well no but that's we're saying that the kid is that same person and the priest is the person in the morgue right no no what we're saying is there's different pictures different photos there's one photo. They just had sex after sex selfies. They had they had sex, they had sex, and they had sex. So it's a guy in a morgue that fucked a dead body. Right, but all I'm saying is like the top two person people kind of look the same, and the top bottom people, and they, so the people that got fucked by the girls on top might have also been fucked by this priest, right? And these people are on the left corner. You know, so guy, guy kind of looks the same. Guy, guy. You're saying these two dudes look the same? If you add a beard and some weight to that guy. (laughs) What? Sure, sure, take it. Just take it. (laughs) (laughs) All I'm saying is first three pictures got fucked, and then the last guy had redemption, and he fucked. <laughs> I like it. All right. I'm I'm there. All right. All right. All right. Number five. <laughs> Morgan go. All right. This is a low carb mousse made with avocado and cocoa powder. That's shit from a butt. This was one of the top memes. Sorry. No, you're fine. I'm I'm allergic to avocado, so that definitely would be that definitely would be shit from my butt. If I ate that, no doubt about I it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt if that's exactly what it was. There's and some it looks thick like pieces that like make me feel like there's like an almond topping to my shit, and I'm uncomfortable with it. But hey, I mean, it probably tastes like shit too. Oh yeah, I couldn't imagine chocolate avocado. Yeah, hey. Vegans got cocoa their cocoa powder. Cocoa powder, yes. And yeah. I, I, that's uh, yeah, yeah. That's one thing. I tried to be vegan for like two weeks, and uh, it, me being allergic to um, tree nuts was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, number four. That look you give the guy next to you at the gangbang when you accidentally bump wieners. Oh my. Um, I don't think that that's the face I would make if I bumped dicks with a person. At a gangbang? Yeah, 
I mean, that any situation, I mean, like that's, yeah, I don't know. The the closest I've ever come is like those trough urinals at venues, you know? Oh, talk about trough. Vi- oh, my <laughs> God. The trough urinals? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Oh. yeah. They're awful. <laughs> it's an awful experience. I think that's the face that I walk into one of those bathrooms and I realize there's oh, trough hey, urinals. Hey. So I'm like... Hey, you give yeah. that you give that like you see the other person and you're like hey, you don't want to say hi, you don't want to smile, but it's like yep. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we're here. Yep. I mean, let's like I'm coming in. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm, here I am. I'm going to be peeing where I you're like, peeing. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like my dicks with mustard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. Number 3. When a single mom invites you to a part of her life, I, I love that, like the the hand guide. Uh, dude, that's, one. that's uh. That should be number one. That's pretty good. I mean, that's like, yeah. I just, I, I love. Welcome that to whole... my trash. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my ba- baggage trash. Trust me, we're gonna crop out the garbage with good pictures of Paris and India. We're going to make this really s- snappy and fast, <laughs> and it's going to look really good. But it, we both know that this is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number two, when you die and realize your family is going to find the artificial ass you've been fucking for the last year. Oh, my. God. Yeah, I, I, I can't say I'm there. Uh, but I know that this exists. Dude, there and... should be life insurance that covers that. <laughs> there should be something kind of insurance that covers your, like, we're going to delete your computer. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you die, we are going to go into your house and make sure that you are not embarrassed. Yeah. For fucking two uh, generations. Yeah, I think it was like a... uh mad tv skit or something it was like i think they did something like that where you uh when you die there was like some kind of insurance where you uh somebody comes in they clean up everything put a bible on your bed <laughs> you know what i mean and like make yourself look so good imagine the people that jerk themselves that like choke themselves out while like died by like artificial you know by uh, yeah yeah association yeah and they're like oh the the thing is, like most people, just say they hung themselves. Why would you rather the world think they were tormented souls? Mm. I don't understand that. Why would you instead of like a pursuit a per, of a, a something? person that just accidentally died of jerking off? Listen, like <laughs> listen, I would rather die of just jerking off, killing myself, than of being tormented and killing myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I like, get what you're um, saying. Like, uh, uh, what's his name from Soundgarden? Mm, uh, Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell. Yeah. Nobody really knows how he hung himself. Right. A lot of speculation is from... Like the, the there was a lot of like pedophilia things though. Right? Is there? You know, not with him. It, the, the conspiracy theory is that he was trying to expose... People oh. of child pornography. So, so there was, was a killed. conspiracy that he was killed. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, maybe he was jerking off. <laughs> and he was doing the thing. He, he was just getting a little the, too the, heavy the, with the it. The David yeah. Carradine incident. Yeah, right, yeah. right. But uh, here's the thing. I would rather Chris Cornell die of jerking off than him being a tormented soul and killing himself or being murdered. Murdered because of child pornography. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, even though he, like, I mean, at least in that defense, I'm just saying, he I was would rather, fighting but, against it. But yeah, yeah. No, or, that's... or 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 um, Robin Williams, somebody yeah. like him. Like, God damn. That's probably really, if there's one celebrity death that's ever fucked with me, it was him. I, I loved him. 
Yeah, he him. was good. I loved him. I mean, that's... my note was Chris Farley. I was in seventh grade when Chris Farley. Oh died. yeah, I was a little too young. Yeah, but I in seventh grade I would love that man. Yeah, so much. And when oh my, me too. My I mean, par- I loved him too. Yeah, my but parents it... said he died. Yeah, because I was like. I went to school, and me and my friend went to the office to see if we could do a moment of silence. Uh Uh-huh. And then two seventh graders asking the office for a moment of silence for Chris Farley. They just, like, no, it's no. Yeah, yeah, at that time. Yeah, I'm sure. Because my grades sucked. Yeah. I guarantee if I was a a nice, pretty white girl with a... So, uh, <laughs> with really good grades, they would have let me have a moment of silence for goddamn Chris Farley, you fucking bitch. Fuck Vermilion schools. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Lorraine schools are better than Vermilion schools. I'm telling you. Better. Well, way there's, better. There's at least, uh, I mean, it, uh, as far as diversity goes, you know, like. Sorry. The, fuck, there, fuck Vermilion schools. I hate Vermilion schools so much. Gotcha. Dude. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm I'm pretty ignorant, you know, as far as that goes. <laughs> I don't, well, that's like, I mean, one of the things is like, I mean, I'm not, you know, like I know a lot of Vermilion people that I fucking hate. Because they're just like pieces of shit. <laughs> Where like I mean I like I went to Vermilion schools, but like my parents and my parents' parents were very much so just like like I mean they were I mean at, at least for that age group. I mean especially my mom's parents. My dad's parents were I mean they grew up in Detroit, so they had some racial issues you know um but my mom's parents were like just not like they were so much so like you say a negative word about a minority and just like you're getting the shit kicked out of you you know um so i at least had that and so i remember like being a kid being raised so much so like anti-race like you know um and then meeting my first black person in Vermilion, which, you know, I mean, I was like probably 15, you 16 years old. your first black first person at 15? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding No. No. Dead serious. Yeah. Isn't that insane? And want to wanna know what else is fucking oh ridiculous about God. that? What? She was a white supremacist. God damn it. She hated I'm black sorry people. I'm you. Yeah. Sorry. I, I worked with a black woman that's like Nigerian black, like Wesley Snipes black. Yeah. And she's like, uh, one of the truckers walked by and she's like, I hate black people. Yeah. And I looked at her and I'm like, is this a fucking like <laughs> test? Yeah. Are you waiting for me to go? I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, and I remember just being like, okay. It, it was one of those things where like, actually one of my best, uh, I mean, you can pour me a little bit. I'm, little I'm not bit. gonna take it as a shot, but it's yeah, all good. That's um, I, like a couple of some like my girlfriend and I's best friends, Shiv and Arjun, um, are Indian, and I remember one of them talking about like how, you know how, and it really was eye opening for me because they were talking about how, you know, their parents are kind of racist in India towards black people. Even and, though they're almost the same skin tone. <laughs> right. Well, but that it's uh it, what it comes down to is you know like the the British army overtook India. And that's why you have like India pale ales, you know. Dude, this whole shit doesn't make sense to me, dude. Honestly, I'm going to tell you, man. A lot of people look at me as a racist cuz I Brand, I, I, I brandish the Gadsden flag, which is the... Uh, yeah, I know what it is. Where is it? It's not here. Oh, it's, God. On my, it's on my hat. I, I do laugh at it every time I see it. I got to tell you that. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Um, oh, I got it. Like, I don't I don't laugh. I, all I say is like, I just... I, I, whenever I see it, I do... Oh, it's cringy? It's not cringy. All I... Like, I just enjoy doing like the... I do it for don't tread on me. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I just love doing it. I'm a Metallica fan too. So it's oh, like uh, yeah, the black album. Yeah, right? the black Isn't, album yeah, had yeah, a, yeah, they yeah. had a song called Don't Tread on Me. Yeah, yeah. Well and even like it was like 
really lightly in the corner of that album, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, most of all, it's an individualist mentality. It's uh, don't fuck with me. I think BLM should use it. I think everybody should use it. Mm. Like I think it's a, it's a a statement for who you are as an individual. That's just my take on it. And uh, but yeah, what were you saying? It was like, it was uh. Stop, bing, don't, bing, don't. Get to the chase, to the chase, fuck, 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 fuck. So, I mean, my only point against that is, um, like how you say it, 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 you know, it should be used as something that says, like, don't fuck with me, right? And I'll agree with that. But fundamentally, if you're, if I, I feel like if you're going down to like the bare bottom of things, like that to me is like a prerequisite, you know, like. Oh yeah, it's like already a given. Yeah, right. Like don't, don't fucking overstep your boundaries. A lot of people don't understand that, but that's all. Yeah, no. Oh no, I totally agree. And that's all. That's but. And I understand, like, the Gatson flag or the Gatson snake is, like... A symbol for something else. Some, well, it, it could be. It's a symbol that other people that are bad would use. And it was and it was used and is used, though, by yeah. problematic affairs. I think that that's where things get hairy. You know, yeah. like, it's like... I, I understand... Well, the, 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 the interesting about thing about that is... Dude, talking about India, they, <coughs> the 7-Eleven and Vermilion, or the uh, one by VOL, had a symbol of the swastika with the eagle on top of it in front of the door. They covered it up or removed it since then. I was one of the people that told them they have a fucking swastika on their door. And they said, oh, we know. It's a symbol of um unity um but they use that to kill millions of fucking people so it's like what so the gas of like i've never i've looked in history it's it was created in revolutionary war against the redcoats it's a individualists type of flag of it's not a unity flag it's not a it's an individual flag like so so people will be like i don't honestly don't care what anybody's views are that wave it don't care the point is you do you i'll do me and that's the whole point. If there's no other, there's no dogma behind but, but it. But you have to understand that, like, there's a lot of people that wave that flag to cause an argument or, like, controversy, right? Like, yeah. Like, all I got to say is, like, I know I'm, like, my aunt's husband. The only reason that flag waves in his living room is to say... I'm your friend to a certain group of people, and I'm your enemy to another group of people. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I got you. Uh, dude, I, I do the same thing. I think the reason why I they are them. Yeah. I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I wouldn't assume you did. You yeah. Know, I, I, uh, you know, like that's – I mean, I, I understand the – I understand both sides of having it and being against it, you know, like, and that's like, um, I, I honestly, the reason why I don't understand being against it is the reason why I brought up that swastika with the Indian family that owned that. So like, thing. that's all I, they, all I got to say is though, with that is like, I don't, and this is a total ignorance on me. May, like, maybe you can educate me is based on American fucking history, like from the very beginning That's of this what conversation. It is. That's what is, it is. I don't 
know at all where either India or China fell into World War Two. Oh yeah. Uh like I just I have no idea. China killed well China was a victim of World War Two. Um besides Japan. Um China got a lot of people murdered. The, like the World War Two was a world war. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, I knew everybody was involved. Um, I knew United States Japan, were like the last Japan ones to hop in. Killed, you know? <laughs> like that's... Japan killed a lot of people in China. And okay. And uh a lot of people in China died in World War. China is a an anomaly of a country that doesn't report deaths. They don't report. Yeah, I mean, like, them and, like that's the whole. The yeah. thing about China, it's a weird country. I mean, any like that's them and re- like the whole communist run kind of thing is like, uh, yeah, it is weird. Very it weird. Is weird. Yeah, but uh, let um, me get to the last meme. Okay, yeah, just for um, the my bad. Continuity. My bad. No, <laughs> yeah. it's all good. Uh, it's, we uh, we it's can me. finish the podcast and then talk about yeah, whatever yeah. afterwards too. All right, <laughs> number one, the top <laughs> meme of the week. Uh, I'm dying right now. My professor is sharing his screen, and this is one of his tabs. Busty college girls. Fully explains theory of relativity. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what it I Fully thought. explains the theory of relativity. <laughs> Fucking dirty minds. Fucking what dirty minds. I mean, obviously. I, d- I don't know what anybody else would think, right? I mean, I thought it was totally harmless. <laughs> right? It's good. Dude, I got to pee. We, this is the episode, bro. Okay, okay. This yeah. is the episode. Yep, yep. All right. It was great. We're done. Hit it. Hit, hit it, it. Hit it. All right. We love you guys. Peace. We out of here. Um, also, I want to thank my Patreon, Steve-O Lin- Steve Long, Dina Lindo, uh, Sinatra Says, and J. Jeff, thank you guys. We appreciate you. I just sent all of them laminate, vinyl laminates in the mail. You'll get a laminate. If you don't know, I, I sent you three. If you don't, if the first one doesn't work, the second one might work, if the third one will work. But I'm going to try to send you a video that shows you how to apply the vinyl because it's a very particular it's the fun box logo they got and it's a lot of small parts if you're transferring vinyl to like a car window yeah. or something a lot of you need a tool so anyway i'll tell you guys about that anyway i gotta go i gotta pee love you guys peace we out of here where's the outro here we go we love you guys <laughs> <laughs>